Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Town Hall episode 21. Sham is making some weird faces over there. This is our 21st episode. As we said in the pre-show, we are now legal to drink as a podcast. <laughs> so we will all be celebrating heavily. But uh, let's go down to Sham 2. What's up, Kevin? Hey, guys. Um, just playing a lot of Mario Kart over the weekend. Uh, I was restricted from going to my computer because apparently it generates too much heat and our air conditioner can't deal with that. So I had to play, <laughs> cool, I had to play only laptop, laptop games or uh, Mario Kart, and so I chose Mario Kart all weekend. So that was great. Laptop but, uh, games. Yeah, that's, that's about it. Now define laptop games. Uh, Hearthstone. Hearthstone, oh. okay. Dunk Train, you are our second host to be on our show twice. What is up? <laughs> uh, not much, man. What I guess honor. recently I've been kind of uh, anime binging, so that's Ooh. basically what I've been doing. Uh, Not no, to get too off topic. Sword Art show. Well, well, I did actually. I hear a lot about that. that thing. Sword Art Online. Yeah, I uh, I watched a little bit. Anything else? I'm curious. Oh God, dude! I watched. Does <laughs> he <laughs> um, want to admit it? <laughs> not really. Uh, Sword Art Online, Kill a Kill, Gurren Lagann. Ooh, that's a good. One. Um, I hate the animation style of Gurren Lagann, so I can't watch I don't Kill a Kill. Something else. Oh, the show's so in a little while. I don't like it. Like over the past week and a half, like just so much anime. Has anybody watched the new Netflix original series that just came on? Oh, I started it. I started Sidonia? it. Um, Knights of Sidonia or something. Yeah. Sidonia. Good. Is that okay. any, any, any decent? Okay, so I don't like the art style. If you have ever seen um, Appleseed yes. by chance, okay, it's similar to that. I think it's like so not half, as good half as Appleseed. CGI, yeah. Yeah, like half CGI. I am not a big fan of the art style. I really liked Appleseed. Um, but I haven't really got into Knights of Sidonia yet, but I'm only like three episodes in, so I'll give it some more time before like calling it quits. Cool. Yeah, I gotta check that out. It's, it's like it keeps popping up on the top of Netflix, which means their advertisement's going right. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Netflix has a good track record of Netflix originals, right? So yeah, exactly. Except for Orange Is the New Black, I can't get into it. Just, All right. Anyway, yeah. No, yeah. no more anime talk. <laughs> Corey, what's going on, man? <laughs> Oh, not too much. Do the usual. Actually, been playing a lot more Hearthstone lately, since the reset, especially. Okay. Been playing that Shockadin, if you guys know. Shock it's so Hurricane. good. It's yeah. so good for cleaning up those those high ranks. And now I'm actually starting to switch over to Handlock. Now, yeah. uh, since we're live, why don't you show off your shirt? Oh yeah, you guys want to see this thing? Oh, and the matching pants. The matching so pants. So for our audio oh. only, Corey's <laughs> yes. got the most amazing. It's pretty like, ridiculous. Like, <laughs> Of a, a reef, 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 core, core, reef, reef. <laughs> no, stop. stop. Uh, I'll allow it. It's I'll beautiful. allow it. It's pretty good. Well, uh, I am. I, my hair will probably be ridiculous all night. It is very, very hot here in New yeah. York. My air conditioning is quite pitiful. <laughs> so quick. Hot in New York. In New York. <laughs> hot in New York. Hot in New York. So on uh, tonight's show, we're going to be talking about. Well, we we got some new skins coming out. Um, in the game, they're going to be available after today's patch. Uh, we have a couple of Reddit discussions we're going to look at now. ESV Diamond, he's a he's been I know he's a StarCraft guy. I actually don't know a ton about his background, but I know he did a lot with StarCraft Two. He posted basically some stats based on his last 330 games. He started recording stats, some numbers, some statistics, like some patterns he's seen in the game. So we're going to take a look at those and compare those. We're going to go really hard on Zagara today. It's going to be a very Zagara heavy show. She's the new hero in the game. I've been playing her pretty much exclusively since she came out, um, yeah. just because I'm very anxious to like get to know her more, and I love the creep spread. It's just a lot of fun. And then you don't in... feel like playing the broken Brightwing. I don't. Well, <laughs> God, she she needs a nerf. I mean, I, I'm going to say it right now. I've been a Brightwing main since the day she came out. She is definitely my main, if, if for how much a main matters in a MOBA. But um, yeah, she is broken as all hell right now. So, <laughs> you and, and Zoya just that was good. Zoya, Zoya just. <laughs> Wrote in our show notes. We have a Google Doc. He wrote, Zoya loves all of you, heart. Oh, what a guy. So, uh, oh. regards to Zoya, yeah. um, oh, who, yeah. is, who is dead. And um, if we look at yep. him, if we, if from we the look grave. At other scene, we actually have him as a little peon working. And oh, for whatever name, his, his name got deleted from that. But um, Anyways, so yeah, we actually have a Reddit post up where you can actually take part in our straw polls. 
So if you want to go to Reddit, you can find it in the news section, maybe on the front page, I'm not actually sure. But the straw polls for each talent, each level on Frizzagara, you can go and vote and pick your basically your decision. And uh, when we get there, we'll be calling our decisions and taking a look at what the general community does and what we tend to go with for Zagara. But that being said, let's start off with ESV Diamond and basically his stats that he posted on Reddit today, actually. So did you guys all see this? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to drop a link in the uh, chat nice. I as like well. It. What a guy, what a guy. Ooh, all right, so, oh, so I'm, I'm, channeling, I'm channeling the Zola. You're right channeling now. the Zola? I'm channeling the Zola. <laughs> and he tells me that these stats, they mean nothing. They mean nothing. Mm. They mean nothing. This is cool to look at. They mean nothing. Yep. <laughs> they mean nothing. Mm. Well, cool I mean, they at. mean they mean he nothing says, yeah, in solo terms Q. of, eh, you know, go ahead. Right. They mean nothing in terms of like any type of scrimmage knowledge. You know, the, Correct. It, it's not going to help in a pre-made five v five, but it does actually help. Like if you're thinking about what makes a really good solo queue or or pub stomper type hero, what what are the things you really need to do? And uh, the really interesting thing was the top five win rates. Uh, Gazla was doing pretty well uh, before the past patch. But in terms of specialists as well, Gazla was at a 52% win rate. And on the murky patch stats, he had like 61% win rate. Gazla, Gazla is a really good, really good hero for this. And, and the question is, why? Why is Gazla doing so well? <laughs> He's easy to make mistakes when you're playing against him, especially in a solo environment. Absolutely. He's harder to keep track of. You don't have a team communicating. Harder to keep track of what he's doing with mercenaries. It's easier if you don't understand what's going on. It's easier to misplay around turrets and allow them to do just absurd amounts of damage. Um, you don't understand how to play around his AOE ultimate. All of that combines, and he's just very good in solo queue. I would argue. Hmm. That's that's pretty true. I mean, like I think one of the biggest things is probably jungle as well. Like people mm -hmm. don't really really know how to deal with jungle, and I think your turret point actually is something that I think I wasn't really thinking too well about. Uh, yeah, people like kind of just see like these little turrets, they do like do like do, boop, boop. Yep. But yep. like those, those little, those little, yeah. those little Ooh, boop, boops hurt. actually add up a lot oh, really yeah, quickly. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. The number um, of times I've watched a new player walk into like three or four turrets, just like, yeah, eh, yeah, whatever, they just melt. I mean, you get, you get decimated real quick. It's it's easy to lose track of them when you're trying to like keep note of your health and you're like okay at 25 percent health I'm gonna back out of this engagement and then you like completely forget that there's turrets planted there and you're like I'm dead that's it well yeah. I just oh, yeah. GG I didn't pay attention to that and I'm getting punished and uh, uh, Kev to to piggyback on what you were saying about like the jungling too it's I think probably at the very low levels people don't jungle as much as they should be and Gazo it's like well you're really pointed in this direction you kind of have to jungle to really make them effective so at a low level if you've got somebody jungling. That's even better because the other team might not be at all. So absolutely, yeah. could be some reasons as to why we're seeing such a high win rate for Gazlo. Well, I mean, we got Gazlo, Falstad, Valak, Kerrigan, and Tyrael all really high. This is for the murky patch. Uh, Kerrigan was still very good. That, that yeah, does not Kerrigan surprise was me. Great. Vala was actually that was the patch where she was weak. Yeah, that's surprising. You're right. Um, and <laughs> Tyrael, but Tyrael, Kevin was just spreading too much bias. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so everyone everybody, was... everybody went and watched that town hall, and they're like, "I can win as Tyrael," and then they did, and that's why uh, the win rate is so high because Tyrael is good. <laughs> the sides are real. <laughs> on the other, on the other side, uh, for yeah. the bottom five win rates, we had Murden, Taranda, Arthas, Diablo, and Tassadar. Now, really surprising to see Tassadar in the bottom five yeah. honestly because tassadar is incredibly strong mm -hmm. but again this is one person's account on the game these are not official blizzard stats that was before the yeah. storm patch though but i think even before he was the still storm great patch, it was still good yeah, yeah he was still really tassadar good, but, has yeah. never been bad there was even yeah. when tassadar yeah. was glitched he was still fine yeah um, he had a lot of glitches at one point and he was still very good uh yeah. murden terrible taronda commonly agreed as the worst support in the game uh arthas he's he's better now yeah, and Diablo has never been bad either. Also, also surprising to see him that low. But Diablo, okay. I would say Diablo has a bit of a... I wouldn't say a... Diablo's harder to really determine what you should be doing right. at every given moment. Did they, did and they change a lot of something? Like, what was the big really. thing that they changed? Because then if you... I hate to jump ahead, but the next patch, he's one of the top five win rates. So right. he, goes, he goes from a 38% win rate to a 64. It's got to be. It, it could literally be... Variance, this man. could be literally based on, like, what he rose free that week. And yeah, like, that yeah, was the other thing I thought well. about that too. Ooh. I was like, I wonder if he took that into account. I, that was my first thought when I saw this. Yeah. Because he's only, the guy said he's only been playing for six weeks, so mm -hmm. you know that's a certain amount of for that's, each patch. 
Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, Abathur on the most games seen thing, like, that had to be when he was free. There's no other way. Like, he he's been yeah. free, like... He's been free like fifty percent of the freaking free weeks. <laughs> it's, I think yeah, it's why? Why is Blizzard it doing fun? this to us? It's <laughs> the best. Uh, I yeah, love no, free weeks. No, I hate it. And guess, who, guess who's back? <laughs> guess who's back this week, guys? Oh, it's ever there. Uh, Crowder just actually hates us to solve the suffer when we're so. And uh, if we go to most game scene, Nova, no surprise, she's got that booty. She's got that kiss in the game. People love Nova. <laughs> Abathur's way up there. Rainer, obviously, he's Rainer's kind of geared to be like the beginner-friendly character for sure. Yeah, and he's, he's always free too. He's always free. Everyone yeah. has him. Uh, I'd be shocked if he wasn't on this list, honestly. Tychus, kind of surprising to see him in this, and Vala, not surprising at all. Lee Sin, this changes real quick because Brightwing. No one played Brightwing. Everyone doubted in Brightwing till they broke her. Now she's broken. I will say. Um, and then Sonia Meriden. Tyrande and Mouth. Mouth, kind of surprising. Yeah, I'm actually surprised Barbarian's there too. Honestly, I think yeah. Barbarian feels to me like a hero that a lot of people could identify with. Like she's a warrior. She gets in there. She does stuff. Like it's surprising to see her on least played. A yes, lot. but it's also really easy to build her terribly. Yes. So, yeah. true. <laughs> true. so it's like they probably play her one like this is awful. I, don't know. I mean, she's uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of people could identify her, but she's also not that exciting. You know, like. Right. That's why. That's why I kind of feel like about most of the you know the Diablo class heroes. It's just like, oh, I could play that class in the same exact mode that I could play in Diablo three, <laughs> or I can play the Lord of Destruction, who I've never been able to play before. Right. But at the same from a, time, from a lore I mean, standpoint, okay. it, it's, yeah. it's, it comes down to playstyle being fun too, and a lot of people look at Sonia the Barbarian and they think Whirlwind. That's going to be awesome. And then they build in the Whirlwind. They're like, this character's awful. <laughs> because Whirlwind is horrendous. Again. And then you, then when you finally learn, hey, you build Sonya and you build a slam build, she's great. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All right, so all this is fun and good. But again, yeah, it's just solo queue. It's probably yeah. not super, super high MMR. It's neat to look at, but... Uh, don't yeah. read into it too much. Exactly. And then, again, Zagara Patch, we see Brightwing jumping up to being the most played because she is absolutely broken right now. I love every minute of it, and I feel bad playing her because it's just it's mean to my opponents because they're going to lose. And <laughs> <laughs> Tychus Diablo, Uther, Zeratul, um, all very good heroes right now. So I'm uh, Yo, Tycho, it's because everybody saw that free week video and they're like, Shim too. Yep. That He's on to something. That must be it, but I have to give you props. It. The video is yes. well made. The video is well made. Yes, it was good. Um terrible font choice. Never never use that font. <laughs> yeah. the Shut thing. up, graphics designer, nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> sorry. And then the bottom win rates, Lily, which is real Lili. surprising. They didn't nerf her that hard. Um, Abathur, no surprise there. Stitches, easy to be bad with Stitches. Kerrigan, again, nerf not that hard. You know, it's, uh, I mean, Kerrigan, not that hard, but it, it changed a lot of how much you knew that you could take in terms of a team fight. Hmm. You know, like, before you'd have X amount of sustain, you could get in and you'd be like, okay, there are four guys, these characters, whatever, I think I should be able to survive this. Now you have half that survivable, not half that survivability, but half the effectiveness of that survivability, if I remember correctly, on the patch note. And so a lot of people were probably getting into engagements and thinking, this is something I can normally deal with. And it wasn't something they could deal with now anymore. Yeah. And I think a lot of people probably just ran into that same issue again and again and again, kind of smashed her face in. She's also very, um, if you don't know at all, like if you're just first time playing her, you can easily die as Kerrigan a lot. Yeah. Especially if you're going like Ultralisk or something. I don't know. Some of the <laughs> yeah. some people suggest Ultralisk and <laughs> Trixler. Oh Trix no, so, the call outs. <laughs> so I'm reading something on Lily a little further down in the thread and I am seeing that her heroic is interruptible now. Yeah. The healing. So, one. Yeah, yeah, it is. so that's uh, pretty huge. Because that was really what was like yeah. okay, this is impossible to deal with her. It was the cooldown, they they I think thirty seconds they took off of it. And then if it's interruptible now, well, that's kind of back to the dumpster tier, honestly. You actually so see a sense. lot of water dragons now, honestly. Yeah. Oh, water Is dragon it? makes me cry every time I see it. <laughs> I a well, if it's on my uh, team, if it's on my team, I get real sad if I see a water dragon. <laughs> see it on their yeah. team, just like, all right, we're good. Yes. We're, we're in there. <laughs> GG. Jeez. Yeah, interruptible right. or not, I mean, Lily is so quick, and she just, as long as you just play safe, you stay around. Not like you have to be right on top of someone, it's pretty decent range, so I mean, I don't mm. think it's bad by any means. I think it's 
it's dealable with now, which is what it needs to be. Um, yeah. But I think that pretty much covers this discussion. Again, one this, thing, is, this is one guy's. Yeah. Yeah. Just I mean, well, I mean, one guy's, but it's a whole bunch of public games, so it makes sense. The one thing that I, uh, I mean, it, it's it's not really related, but apparently one thing I've been hearing a lot lately, and I keep bringing this up just because it makes me so happy, is apparently one of the top picks for scrim teams is Diablo as a tank. The Dibbles. The yeah, Dibbles. You've seen a lot of Diablos right now. Um, I, I know Brightwing, Tassadar, and Malf. I think they're the three most common supports. And um, do you guys play? Do you play draft at all, Dunk? Um, only as a sub sometimes. I don't really have a team, so like a lot of times when people are looking for a fifth, I'll hop in there. Yeah. I, I was watching Idra a bunch today. He was mm. streaming with uh, Pukaber, LZ Gamer, and some other guys. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm you know I'm just happy because Dibbles is my main. I kind of stopped playing him for a bit because it kind of just got boring. Well, you got to mix it up. I mean, exactly. Yeah, you know, I've been playing been playing a lot of cigar and whatnot, but yeah, I'm glad to hear that Dibbles is is back. You know, he's, he's very terror. good. Do you still take Blink? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, of good. course I take Blink. All right, good. How would you that's what makes him scary. No, I know, I know. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Blink is, that's still the uh, Blink is great. Yeah, yeah for so sure. good. All right, cool. So shout anyway. out to ESV Diamond for all his numbers. I mean, yeah, it's really cool to neat. see people really working because that's you know he's tracking this information after each game on paper on a notepad in his computer so that's, that's some dedication that's really good it's a lot yeah. of information it's really good to see that kind of stuff so shout out once again and uh we actually have two new skins that went into the alpha oh. today one of them has been very very highly sought out for and that is candy king murden who in esv diamond's latest stats came like eight times as like the least Good champ of all time. Not but. anymore, because <laughs> you, you know skins make it better. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Everyone's yes. gonna be playing with this guy. Look at the little hey. the little bees on his little lollipop mallet. God, it's just um, so good. It's, it's just the amount of detail. The little gumdrops so on his shoulder. Make him he has a chocolate cod piece. Come on. It, he, he <laughs> Check it actually out. make him dizzy. Make him dizzy. I just did. I just did. Oh, you did. Okay. All right. Sorry. He uh. But you he can actually see turns into chocolate. When he uses his heroic. Oh my god. Yeah. His whole skin yeah. changes and becomes oh. chocolate when he uses his heroic. They and really knew course, what they were doing with this one. Any skin variation, you get the, the normal chocolate skin and you get the lime the, flavor. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this is, personally is my candy preference. This is like the most delicious, but um Yeah, but it's like lime with a whole bunch of chocolate too. So it's kinda of really gross. I, I don't know, I'm interested. You got my attention, Martin. Um your well, citrus suit? <laughs> Stop. Oh my god. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, he looks sick. D minus. This is one of the coolest uh, skins. Yeah. It is so beautiful. I mean, it and, and again, is. it's it's way more than any other game I think as I've ever seen for customization from like A to B, from the normal skin to this. I don't think I've ever seen anything that's Blizzard, that yeah. close. Blizzard does ridiculously good job. with. Um, this is not the first one they've done a really good job. But, I mean, League has some cool ones. Um... But the all right, I know nothing about Leak. She has a keyboard and she has like pixelated death animation. Sona. Yeah. Yeah. You're that, talking that, about arcade Sona. Arcade Sona. I thought that was cool. I got a free one at PAX. I was like, this is cool. Yeah, that's my league knowledge right there. Um, <laughs> and then the other skin we got is the actual Spectre, which is kind of like the it's a variation to a ghost in StarCraft Two in the campaign. It's not in multiplayer. Um, but Spectres are a human or a Terran type unit. But they made a Protoss Spectre for Illidan. I guess it's not Protoss. But it's still cool. Yeah, and we I like have, it. I like it. It looks like a. Yeah, oh, the purple. Wow, that looks really yeah. cool. How about yeah, the white? that one looks good. It looks really cool. That's the he purple. Like... And here's the white one. Also. Yeah. No, man. It matches, matches Sergeant it Hammer. Matches Sergeant Hammer. Hammer. So I love it. So matches <laughs> Hammer. There we go. <laughs> Team matching tints. Here's the yes. funny thing. Like, so many, like every time we, we do pre made games, we always try to match our tints. We always want to oh, look God. uniform. No. Team, oh, pink. Team Pink is team legit. Team Pink is, is legit. Team Pink is the best team. Except, yeah, except the they, took away, they took away Pepto Bismo stitches. So They did. That's so sad. Yeah. I so it's okay. Because now you can play with a better tank, which is Diablo, and he's got a pink tint. Dude, the pink Lurkablo Diablo is so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, those are our new skins. Very cool. Um, are you guys going to buy them? 
I'm gonna buy Candy King. I mean, I hate Muradin now because they ruined my my only two talents that I ever used on him. But I'm still gonna buy it just because it looks freaking awesome. Hmm. Coops? Can't say I'm gonna. No. Coops, have you ever bought a skin? Yeah, I have tons of skins. Are you kidding me? Oh, do you? Oh, tons. tons. Puns. What's that's? No. He has uh, he has such a hammer. Yeah, I've no, got a hammer right. skin. I've got a uh, I've got barb skin. I know I've got a bunch of other skins. I'd have to go look. Dunkus. I might buy the Spectre Illidan one after he gets some buffs. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> but yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I can't see myself buying the Candy King Mirrodin one. Like, it's nice, but it's just not my thing. Mainly because it's Mirrodin. <laughs> You're never really going to want to play it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I personally just bought a skin the other night because I unlocked the third tint. Yes. Of Zagara. Mm -hmm. I, I I love her her second and third tint for this skin, so I just had to buy it. Um, here's... Really? Because I hate the third tint. The no, it looks great. Tint looks awesome. The third I like that second tint. Uh, the, the third wings. tint. You gotta talk about terrible. the wings. So the yeah, wings. when 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 you're in the third tint, she has these big, beautiful orange wings that come out when she's mounted, and it looks really cool. It helps. It really it really brings out the, the full skin, you know. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But I do agree that this is a pretty cool tint. And uh, I'm not a fan of this one at all. I've actually never even used this. Um, I've just rocked these two. But pretty interchangeable for me. But on that note, we're actually going to segue into some Zagara discussion because most of tonight's show is actually going to be focused on Zagara. She is the new hero in the game. She's the hot topic. I think she's mixing things up a little bit because while Murky kind of made people angry and they, <laughs> they already changed him a lot and a lot of people just you know said this Murky makes the game a lot less fun, I actually haven't seen a lot of posts on Zagara. Now, I think Zagara is very good, and I think the creep mechanism, the whole, the amount of vision it provides, and the whole, the way that she works in general as a hero, and she's one of the, well, not the first, but she definitely fits a, she can, she can definitely be viable in teamfights, and she's very good at pushing, and uh, that's something that, like, she's good at both at once, and that's something like, Murky, you kind of have to go one way or the other. I mean, Murky, you're either good at pushing, and not really that good at team fighting. That might have changed in the last patch. I haven't actually played Murky since Cigar came out because I was just yeah. like, I'm done with Not you. really. Murky's, I mean, he, uh, most people that I see trying to go for the most effectiveness you can go with Murky right now is going for the slime build, which is more of just kind of team fight 1v1-ing. In a, well, not really 1v1-ing, but like a team fight kind of build. Like maybe assassinating uh, and like assassinating uh, people who are like hurt. Yeah, it's uh, you just kind of just get all your slime build to get uh, all the slime talents, or most of them. Uh, in Venom, and then you go for Octo Grab. So oddly you, you get in Venom, Octo Grab, you get Slime on Death. Uh, no, you don't get that. That's in Venom's level. So you get I think. the increased yeah. slime range. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, and then the slime, every time somebody is slimed and you get re hit by Murky, it increases slime's duration. Yeah. Uh, and uh, anything that's slimed that gets hit by Murky gets like 50% more damage, 100% more damage uh, from his auto attacks. So yes, it's yes. A, it actually like all synergizes really well. You throw like you throw um, your puffer fish down, you venom, blah blah blah. You do all that stuff, and then you try and get uh, an octo grab over the puffer fish. So you get that little bit of extra damage, um, and you can actually assassinate uh, the the weaker people of their team pretty easily. Uh, the first time that I ran this build without ever really playing Murky more than I think five or six games, I, I was I was I killed like thirty people. Wow. Without like. And about 15 of those were 1v1s. That's cool. I mean, that was a pub game, so take that as you will. We still lost because my team was terrible, but <laughs> yeah. I killed a lot of people. <laughs> anyway, that's murky. So, Zagara. <laughs> yes. Also a pusher, but kind of. So let, me, let, me get the, let me get into the, uh, the, the talents and abilities of yeah, Zagara. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's wait. Let's wait a little bit. I actually want to pick Donk's brain a little bit before we go oh, into yes. our builds. Um, we can introduce. Well, no, no, no. I, I wanted to get into like her talents and like okay. her, or not talents, her her abilities and, and what she is. Fair enough. We can introduce the hero. We'll do that. We we'll do, probably the, do, we'll that. do the builds after. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good. Good call. Good call. Good work. Good, good co-hosting. Team, <laughs> team, team effort. Team effort. <laughs> All right. Do it. Up. All right, everybody. So Zagara is the dude mother of the swarm. She's a specialist from StarCraft, and her trait, which is. Which really, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how I feel about it. Her trait is Creep Tumor. 
So what this means is you can lay down a creep tumor that generates creep. You and your summons move 20% faster on creep and regenerate health 100% faster. Tumors last 240 seconds and you can have three charges saved up. This also generates the, the creep tumor itself actually gives you vision too. So it's been acting as like a vision ward and that's what I've been using it for the most part is putting it in those bushes or uh, places where your enemy is going to be walking around a lot. Also to note, creep tumors cloak. However, they can be killed with AOE damage. Yep. Yep. So her abilities, uh, her first is Q. It's a bangling barrage. It's a channel for about three seconds or two seconds. It's maybe a, maybe a second. It's very yeah, short. It's very short. Uh, launches four banglings that deal 35 plus 5 per level splash damage in a line. Her W is a hunter killer. You summon a hydralisk to attack a single target dealing 40 plus 6 damage per level uh, per second. And that lasts 8 seconds and just kind of chases somebody down and keeps following them and keeps trying to do as much damage to them as possible. And then her E is an infested drop with a cooldown of 12 seconds. Bombards target area with a zerg drop pod for 60 plus 12 her level damage, and then afterwards spawns two Roachlings that have 625, wait, hold on, 225 plus 20 per level health, and deals 13 plus 2 per level damage and lasts for 8 seconds. God, imagine so 625 you, health on a Roach? Oh yeah, my know, god. I'm not, I'm not sure why this, this, <laughs> this, uh, why this website says 625 and then says 225, but anyway. And then she's got two heroic abilities, Devouring Maw, which is a 100 second cooldown, Summon a Devouring Maw, which is just this giant, I don't know. It's a Sarlacc. Yeah, it's a Sarlacc, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Uh, that deals 75 plus 24 damage per level um, and devours enemies for seconds, four seconds. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Devoured enemies cannot fight and take, 30, and take 38 damage per second. Uh, her second heroic ability you can choose is Nidus Network. It's got a cooldown of 60 seconds, and you can hold two charges of it. Summons a Nidus Worm at target location in which you can enter by right-clicking. While inside, you can exit the target, uh, exit another Nidus Worm, and you can have a maximum of four of those across the map. So basically, you have these teleport spots that allow you to teleport between all four of them at once. Um, whenever you get in, it takes like a second to channel, maybe yeah, half a second stunned. to channel. 1.5, I believe. And, yeah. uh, 5 seconds to get in there. They don't actually have any of these channel times. Yeah, around. no. Yeah, that would that, be great. Uh, no. Banelings is less than a second to cast, and the actual getting into the Nidus network is about 1.5 seconds to get in. Um, you can be interrupted, but when you're inside, you are invincible. In yeah. Interesting note. If the Nidus worm you're channeling on to get into dies, you still make it in. Yeah, it's cool. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, and if all of the Nidus networks are killed, you're inside a Nidus network, the last one that uh, gets killed you pop out of, yes. so you don't actually yep. just glitch out. I was afraid because we've run into some <laughs> of those glitch out of the whole entire world situations with Blizzard. <laughs> Alpha. Alpha, but yeah. It didn't actually happen, so I was pretty pretty happy about that. It didn't happen, but um, before we jump into the talents and stuff, we're going to start picking apart a thread that Dunk yeah. posted on Reddit a few days ago, but... Before we start on that, I just want to remind you that we have a Reddit post for this discussion, and there are straw polls for each level where you guys can pick the talent that you guys would go with when you play Zagara. Um, it's just a way to make the show more interactive, so if you guys want to hop over to Reddit, check out the thread there, and go to the straw polls and make your votes. We will be comparing the user votes to our votes, essentially, and we'll be voting along as well. I'll post them up as we do by level two. So Yeah, of course, but if you guys want to get there ahead of time... It yep. is there for you. Or if you're listening to the audio only and you want to check out the post afterwards and see what everybody uh, voted for. Okay. Oh. We, we will actually be including all of these straw polls on our blog from the, from this point on. Um, each Our blog has basically our MP3 format and our video format on there. So all of the straw polls will be there for the VOD watchers so they wanna, if they want to take part in that as well. It's just going to be cool to like check back on this stuff down the road, especially if when, when the game gets patched and we change our opinions a little bit. Um, what was that, a plug? You're trying to pull a Kubi? <laughs> trying to hold the plug up to the screen? <laughs> All I had was my little Mac plug, though, so that didn't really work it's out so, well. so pitiful, so pitiful. <laughs> but that being said, I just linked the Reddit discussion for Dunk's design right, cool. review. So, Dunk loves thematic everything. Yes, he's all about the themes. So I think that was the general theme, for lack of a better word, of this post. <laughs> <laughs> So, Doug, so. why don't you just give us, I guess, you know, like a like a short synopsis of, of what you're trying to trying to get through with this Reddit post? All right, sure. So, basically, 
I was super hyped to get a Broodmother in the game because I'm a Zerg player and like a big fan of the Zerg. So to get the Broodmother in was really exciting because it was the first hero that like really felt like it had something to do with the Zerg. I mean, Kerrigan is a Zerg hero, but it's not like she's particularly like, she doesn't feel like Zerg, right? Her kit doesn't make you think like, oh, I'm playing a Zerg hero. It doesn't actually feel like that. Um, yeah. Like there's some Zerglings or an Ultralisk or whatever, but it doesn't feel like I'm playing Zerg hero. Zagara does. Zagara nails it on the head. You feel like you're playing as part of the swarm and it feels great. It's awesome. <laughs> like totally in love. But as I played, like there were a lot of things that kept popping up, like little things that I was like, this doesn't feel quite right. Um, and I just wanted to kind of get my thoughts out there on that and then see what other people thought of some of those as well. It's basically the gist of the Reddit post. So hmm. let's talk about creep because there was a good bit of discussion about creep in there terms was, of yeah. what should be there thematically, what should, mm -hmm. how should the move work in general? Like, should creep give you vision? Should just the tumor give you vision? So, how do you guys feel? I mean, we know how Dunk feels about it, but Kevin, <laughs> Jake, yeah, uh, what are you guys' so thoughts on like the, the biggest problem I have with Zagara is that I was using the creep not in the way that you normally use creep mm -hmm. in StarCraft 2 and, and Dunk you saw my post about this is that you normally want to make creep as your attack path into your enemy you want to put down so that you can get in, get out be everywhere and in StarCraft 2 you also have a, you know it also gives you a lot of uh, map vision, map control and everything yeah. and that's great in StarCraft 2 but being able to have vision in a MOBA is ridiculously different from having vision in StarCraft 2 and, and a lot of people are probably going to give me a lot of crap about saying that right now but being able to throw down those creep tumors when nobody on the other team like so if this is say a scrimmage or some sort of ranked match where you, you know only one team can have that hero it's really kind of unfair because you have these uh, wards like in every other game that are only 10 mana last 240 seconds and you can have a ridiculous amount of them now, granted, your enemies can take them out, but they're they have to have an AOE spell, which not many, you know, not all the heroes do. And before then, they're revealed, so you know where your enemies' locations are. With these creep tumors, that can be absolutely everywhere in all the most pivotal spots on a map. So that's the only thing that I had the biggest problem with is it, it kind of thematically gets away from what the creep is supposed to be. Supposed to be. Supposed, supposed, <laughs> supposed, 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 supposed to be. Supposed to be. Supposed to be. Supposed to be. Something that allows you to build like this highway and build this like in like the sphere of influence, this slimy influence into like the enemy's base. Um, instead, I I end up and I think it's probably the best way you could possibly use it, putting little creep tumors around the map in these pivotal spots, like the little triangle in yeah. Dragonshire that's right below, yeah. or all the bushes and everything. And that's not where you're really supposed to be using it, Mark or how you're supposed to be using it. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, it's a combination. Um, early game. Yeah, I know I'm going to kind of just be in lane, and it's going to be pretty predictable. I tend to just kind of keep them, like, I tend to go middle lane. And I put, you know, creep tumors in all the jungles, you know, top, bottom, and, and they kind of make a highway just to get away. I use creep to, as a, you know, a get out, because Zagara doesn't really have any movement options until 20 where I grab blink. But definitely once you start floating around on the map, especially on Cursed Hollow, you definitely start putting those creep tumors down um, in the most, you know, again, those the crossroads, mercenary camps. Um, you know, at the chests on, on Black Hearts Bay. Uh, and it's, it's, it's invaluable. It's like infinite wards that cost you almost nothing. Um, you can store up to three at a time. They're really short cooldown. And they're honestly phenomenal. But I, I don't think they're broken because they can be dealt with. There's so many heroes that excel in removing them. Tassadar can use his passive to see them and then just clear them up. So Tassadar is absolutely amazing at eliminating it. Any Tychus that's just running around, running and gunning, is just going to clear them up, like, just on their own. Same thing with the Sony using Whirlwind. So yep. any AoE that just happens to hit them, whether it's Hammer's normal Siege, siege Fire, is going to remove them. Um, and when I play Brightwing, I, I, you know, Brightwing, you have regenerative reigns. I actually use my Q to remove Creep Tumors, because you can, once you understand how Zagara works, you can really easily tell where the Creep Tumors are going to be, even though you can't see them. Uh, maybe it's like my StarCraft II knowledge. I, I kind of understand that's going to be in the middle and the actual general range of a creep. <laughs> it's tumor. a very difficult concept. I know, right? <laughs> no, but this, this is a very specific size. You know what I yeah, mean? Of but, course, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I think that it's just kind of one of those things. I mean, people are saying yeah, it's broken, but they expire after about four minutes, 
Each tumor does expire on their own. I think it's about four minutes. Yes, it's a long time. It's not StarCraft 2 minutes either. It's real minutes. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they're great. But it's, it's, I, I, don't, I don't want them to change it because I love it. <laughs> uh, how does it fit in with their balance, do you guys feel? If you can be as like high level as possible with this uh, without getting that's, into too many details. That's actually a really interesting question because you have to ask how much of the power level of your character do you want to be tied into this vision mechanic? Because fundamentally, vision itself is so powerful that like, to have a skill that's so casually placed like on our combat trait that gives that much vision, it does actually have a meaningful impact on the rest of our kit and how powerful that can be. Yeah. I mean, like vision is the most powerful thing in MOBAs, I would say, and right after that is probably mo mobility. Yeah. And like to have such a powerful vision tool on your combat trait is like mm, questionable. Questionable. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. I mean, I mean, people people will use their sixty second cooldown of a mule just to put one yeah. mule at yeah. a jungle camp, so that they know just barely when an enemy is starting their jungle camp. Now I can put a creep tumor at every, like, as soon as I get, in, I mean, and granted, mule's global, so it's a little yeah, bit easier yeah. to do. And However, zero risk. Zero risk. Yeah, right. and zero risk. But, but now I have this four-minute ward that if I get any map control at all, I can now put these wards at every single jungle camp, and I'll be able to tell exactly when they're moving to that jungle camp and to take that jungle camp so but, we can contest it. Or when they're, whenever they're even moving out on the map. And they they can take them out, yes, but I mean, who's gonna take out a, a creep? They have to tumor? dismount. Oh, you have to dismount to deal right. with the tumor. That <laughs> right. feels so bad. Like you're trying to run somewhere, and like you know the tumor saw you, and you're like, guess I better dismount, walk back <laughs> to my lane, try again <laughs> oh. in a minute. Like, oh, soul crush. It's true, yes. but at the same time, you're never gonna have a Zagara just literally running around the map putting creep tumors down. They're gonna yeah, put absolutely. like as as I'm running from to one tribute to another. Yes, I'm gonna put that creep tumor down in a pivotal point. Um, because yep. it's on my way, but I'm not gonna just go out of my way and be like, this Merc camp and this Merc camp yeah. and this Merc. That's not how you play Zagara. No, that is not that how you play it. If you, you don't play Zagara that way, then you no. are missing such a pivotal point. Yeah. Like no, why you, you, those creep tumors are when, amazing. When you're on that part of the map for a map objective, yes, make the detour and do it. But don't run around the whole map doing it just for the point of doing it. I mean, there's well, there's an extent. Like, like picture cursed hollow. I think it's there's definitely some value to always having their knights and their golem creeped. On cursed hollow, that's not too much. Like that's, that's not too much that's, to ask for. It's a little bit of a detour. Grave, grave golem. I mean, anytime they want to go for grave golem, that's a heck of a. Oh, fight what did I say? That's what I meant. That's yeah, what I meant. Yes, yes. That's yeah. that's something that's easy to accomplish. But like, you know. That's There's the, always a high priority something or yes. other on the map, like uh, Black Hearts Bay. You definitely want to have the, the the giant golem. Always want to have that warded up, and you always want to have mm -hmm. Black Heart himself warded up. Yeah, always yeah, always yeah, something. I mean, yeah. Black Heart himself is invaluable. Okay, they're turning in. We know. Yeah. We we always know. Um, I think I that, think it's definitely worthwhile to like go out of your way to make sure that those spots are always creeped. Yeah. To some extent, and it's it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to do it because I mean, yeah, Black you Hole, yeah, you're gonna be there and you're gonna be standing yeah. there for a bit. And not only does that mean that you're gonna have vision there, but when you start fighting there, that means you have a place where you're gonna have HP regen and move speed. Yeah, true, true. It's, it's, good. it's I think it's I you know I think creep tumor is a pretty good talent already. I think a little bit of a buff, maybe like a damage buff, or if something's on creep, like one of your summons on creep, it does like a five percent slow or something like on attack or something. Just a small little buff somewhere else. Get rid of the vision, because huh. you don't you don't want to have the vision on there at all. It's just you take a vision. Important. You have to make some pretty dramatic you, changes. Yeah. I think. Yeah. That's what I'm needs. saying. I'm so I'm saying you need to have dramatic dramatic changes. But I think the vision is way too strong. Way way too strong. I I don't I disagree, but uh, I don't. Hmm. Maybe they need to expire in like three minutes instead of four or something. Oh, or or I like let, like what what's up? Uh, what if they made it more like StarCraft Two, where it was like the creep tumors spawn off of each other oh, no. and then like it made it so that it was really expensive to place a new creep tumor somewhere huh it has a really long cooldown. so right now the cooldown's like i don't know it's not very long it's like eight seconds or something like that to plant a new one but if they made it so that it was cheaper to like expand your current creep but to put down a new ward as, you, as you're playing it then it mm. would be more expensive Maybe like every. every I would love that. That's really I complex. Honestly, I think I'd that's be okay with that. Really but complex though, and they've not avoided gonna, that level yeah. of complexity. They're not going to do that for that reason. Yeah, Where you have yeah. to select addition an additional unit 
being the creep. Maybe not even that, but it's yeah. like if you're already on creep, you can place free creep. Maybe tumors. like I, don't I know, see what you're saying. So like maybe that. like creep tumors on open ground cost two charges, and creep tumors on creeped ground cost one okay. charge. Something like yeah, that. That's, that's pretty simple. That's I like simple. that. Maybe I could see something like that happening. Again, unintuitive, hard to communicate to yeah, a first-time Zakara player, is. but not entirely like ungraspable. That that's much more reasonable than. But you take away the vision, though. Oh, no. God, it just Zagara is is so. She has no movement, and she's she's squishy as all hell. She relies mm -hmm. on getting the heads up. Hey, somebody's coming to gank me. I need to react. She relies yeah. on that. Otherwise, she is just dead. Like, yeah. you can throw your hydras down, call down your roaches. It's gonna hurt them a lot, but it's you're gonna die. Like, yeah. All so right. I think she relies on that. And unless you like, well, I mean, the thing is, the thing that sorry, this is me about putting creep tumors down in lane, is that. If you're putting creep tumors down where there's going to be, you know, creeps walking and everything, then they get AoE'd all the time. Oh, casually, yeah. Well, that's it's, why you don't... It's, it's not even like nobody's actually even going for it. And I think, I think that's probably the most annoying thing about the creep tumor mechanic is, like, it's not only that I feel like I have to put them in the bushes just so I can always check who's in the bushes... But if I put them anywhere else, they're just going to be casually taken out by AOE. You go out and of your way to many... place, place them better than not in the middle of the path. I mean, yeah, because I mean, like they, they they can't take a hit, and as soon as anybody, I mean, I said not many people have AOE, or not not many people don't have, don't AOE. have AOE, and they're going to yeah. be spending all that AOE on the creep waves, and it's just going to always take out your 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 tumors. It's a good amount of them, but it's easy to replace. Not that easy. That's a lot of mana. If you start like really putting down, like, counting how much mana you spend on creep tumors, if you're gonna keep putting them down every time they get taken out, yeah, it's it's, it's a lot. It's, it's probably the cheapest spell in the game. I think it, it is. is. Moonfire but you, is time. You use <laughs> the moonfire. It requires it requires time, and you have to spend. You do spend a lot of mana, like putting them down constantly. Over time, for sure. But I don't know. I play a lot of Zagara. I have no issues with it. I think. I think that uh, keeping my creep spread good enough for me to be able to, you know, be safe has is, is never been a huge issue. There are a few games against, like, when there's, like, a Tychus and a Tassadar where I'm just like, wow, this is awful. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, I don't know. Any other, like, big points you want to talk about from your discussion? Because it was actually a pretty long, like, did you get into, like, any banter with other What editors? else came up? Uh, Nidus's were talked about a good decent amount. Oh, yeah, and, Nidus like, was Like, whether it should be global. Mm-hmm. Like, cause all right, in StarCraft, thematically, yep. in StarCraft it's where too. you have vision. Yeah, StarCraft yep. Two, it's where you have vision. You can play plant oh, So you just need an so Overlord, good. right? Right. So how do we feel about that? Is that too good? Like, what's? I think I that's think where it needs good. to be. Honestly, yeah. I think that's where it needs to be. I think Nidus is not in a good place right now. Nidus is not very good right now, for sure. Yeah. Um, it's like, fun. It, it's supposed to be. It's fun. It's fun, and I. I mean, I use it for vision more than anything else. Hey, screen wide, what's happening over there? Are they at the Grave Golem? Oh, let's find out. Just spend my Nidus. You know, and uh, <laughs> that's what I use it for. And every once in a while, I try to use it to body block. I just put it in a, oh, yeah. in a spot yeah. and I use it to body block. But I rarely actually use the Nidus for, I mean, if I need mana I'm, and we're like, we're in the lead, I might go back to base with it and come back out. But <gasps> yeah, yeah, but like. Uh, so powerful. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice on, uh, it's nice on Chris Hollow. Yeah, yeah. Even then, I would prefer to have Ma. I think. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't think there's ever a reason to actually take Nidus if you want to win the game at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I completely agree. It it doesn't really do anything. The Maw is actually not that bad, and the level twenty for the t uh, for the Nidus, which somebody is mentioning in chat, is terrible. Underwhelming. Yeah. Oh god, it yeah. makes yeah. no sense at all. Do you see that one video of one guy oh, making god, yeah. out of it? Like, yeah. it he just happened to... The reason he made a video is because it's, it it's never not expected. It, it, it never happened, happened before. before. It never happened before. It's like the one time the level 20 night is thinking, like, why did he even get it is what I want to know. <laughs> I feel like Blizzard was just like, how do we make this better? Well, I don't know. We'll make some things come out of it. <laughs> they were just like throwing darts at a wall so about like when they were coming up with the upgrade. If the level 20 talent made it a map wide cast, would that fix it? Ooh. Um, oh. hmm, I don't know. I have to invest <laughs> both my talent points to get yeah. the map wide. Yeah, that's you're losing I mean, that's, that's actually an interesting proposition. I, I would be tempted to try it out for sure. But you make yourself so vulnerable if yes. you don't pick up Bolt of the Storm. Yeah, like, you you're bolt. so mm -hmm. vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. Do you need Bolt? She's especially at 20. She needs it. Um, yeah. Um, 
I mean, I think my biggest problem with Nidus is like it's just it's too clunky. Like you have to channel it to get in, and then it's you know you get back out, but then you have to channel it to back get back. I don't know. I I really kind of wish that they didn't have a channel on it, which I think at one point would also make it a little bit sh too strong. Yeah, it would be broken but, if there was no channel to get inside. At least, like. I think you have to admit, it'd be too powerful to escape. She would have, like, the best escape tool in the entire game. Because you always basically pop a Nidus at your fountain, right? Everyone does that. Yeah, always. Because there's nowhere else to put one that <laughs> matters. You can have that. four at a time, but yes, one yeah. of those goes at your fountain. Yeah, and, like, if you could just drop Nidus behind you and then, like, right click it immediately go in, that would be way, way powerful. Yeah, but I feel like it'd be too good, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I don't know. I don't really see the, the point of going with uh, Nidus ever. Right now, I agree. I, other than I'm, I want to have fun with it. Um, yeah. Like, so it, I've made some dumb plays where I literally just go from like one side of the bush to the other just to kill someone, <laughs> and it, it's just like it's just like funny to me, and it's just like, haha, you thought you were getting away, but I put a nidus there and I got over there. Yeah. But it's not good. Uh, that's for sure. Just funny because the initial thought, looking oh, it's gonna you know, be before it came out, like oh, we're just like all oh, this mobility is going to be ridiculous. But we, yeah, yeah. We just turns out I guess it's a bit overrated. I don't know. Well, <laughs> like a lot of your spectrum of like how good mobility is for a lot of the longtime players of the genre are based on games with much larger maps and much higher travel times. Sure. So like you have this really ingrained sense of like how valuable mobility is, and then in this game it comes as kind of like a shock when mobility is so much less powerful. As far as like map mobility, like yeah, yeah. small skirmish, like the small mobility is still really good, but the map mobility is so much less valuable than in similar games in the genre. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. That's very fair, especially with the the mount speed being buffed recently and it's mm -hmm. fast as it is. Mm -hmm. It's doesn't take you that long to get from top lane to bottom lane. Yeah. yeah, no, not at all, not at all. What cool Zerg unit would you want to go down lane if you had like a Nidus? Like imagine Nidus at level twenty, just spout every thirty seconds. No, it's too much like Locust. No, yeah, I, I mean that's what people know. said. It's too much like Locust, but I don't really think it is. Like, and it fits like with what you're trying to do like, as the hero. It's already what Abathur does, a, yeah. and if they ever want to make a swarm host hero, you then have like a triple overlap. I don't see a swarm host hero being in the game ever. Think about yeah, like how much depth and how much richness there is in the pool of heroes, and you're just gonna like take a random Zerg unit. Sure, he's cool or whatever, but like you're gonna make an entire hero out of a yeah, swarm host. Yeah, you're probably right. Every if, you, if, your Nidus worm, if your Nidus worm made a swarm host, now we're talking. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so the longer they leave the Nidus worm, the longer they leave the Nidus worm, the more brutal it is in that lane. Like they have to go find the Nidus worm and kill all the swarm hosts around it, or else they'll just get run over. Oh my god! How cool would that be? He's so dumb. He's so excited. <laughs> I really <laughs> like that dumb. idea. I think that's hilarious. Also awful, but hilarious. <laughs> I want to see it done. Yes, Zer Zerglings march out of it like March of Murlocs from Murky. That that's good. Let's do that. Just permanent March of Murlocs from Nidus. <laughs> <laughs> Balanced. All right, so we want to talk about talents. Let's, Let's actually. Talents. I need to grab water desperately, so we're actually oh, yeah. going to take a quick commercial break. And when we get back, we will actually jump in, do the talents yeah. again. Go to reddit.com/r/heroes of the storm. We have a post there. You can actually vote on the straw polls for each talent level. And uh, when we get back from our quick break, we'll be breaking down Zagara in full. Stay tuned. <laughs>
Welcome back to Town Hall episode 21. We've been chatting about Zagara a bunch this week. We have our special guest Dunk Train joining us for the second time, if you're just tuning in. Self-proclaimed Zagara expert. <laughs> I don't think I ever actually claimed that. You did you're, now. You're putting words in my mouth, buddy. <laughs> uh. So in, uh, every week we uh, break down a hero. We just kind of take one hero. We, we announce it the week prior and we say we are going to look at this hero. We're going to pick out kind of like what we think is the best build for the hero. Sometimes multiple builds if it's like Tassadar and we think there's two builds that are viable. And uh, But this week, we're talking Tassadar and we've had no premeditated no, thoughts. Not we're talking Tassadar. Zagara. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Almost. It's hot. It's hot. Their, Rip. Name, it's so their, hot. their Rip. names have That's the same amount of syllables possibly. <laughs> Uh, yes, Zagara. Now, we already did the original breakdown. We usually do that all at once, but since we just did a lot of, like, other opinions based on a Reddit thread, we're just going to start straight from the talents. Now, once again, we have we do straw polls every week. Corey posted the first straw poll in the chat, so if you're, if you're mobile, you might not be able to do that. That sounds annoying, but if you're watching from the VOD, the straw polls will be available on our website, which is townhall.wordpress.com. Downhallshow.wordpress.com. Kevin's here to make me make me correct. Oh, jeez, Jake, okay. just dropping the ball. Oh, yeah, it's hot. Okay, it's like hundred degrees, <laughs> and uh, I don't like the warmth oh. at all. So that being said, let's go to level one. Kevin, read him off. Just, he's, where did he's, just not, he's not. Ready. It was just there. No, it was just there. No, we got right, demolitionist. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, number one, level one, tier one. We have demolitionist, which is basic attacks. Against structures, destroy one ammo and deal an additional 10% damage. Centrifugal hooks. Banelings can travel twice as far before exploding. Ventral sacks. Infested drop now spawns three roachlings. Up from two. Reconstitution. Health regeneration bonus on creep re uh, increased to 300% up from 100%. Yes. Okay. So. Dunk. Dunk what do you pick in? Look at that beard. Ooh, I actually really, really like this talent tier for Zagara. I think Ventral Sax is like pretty much the generic front runner. Like it's really powerful um, compared to the others. I like the idea of Reconstitution. I've had the opportunity to use it in a couple lanes, and I found it pretty good in lanes that are like one v two and stuff. Like you're trying to hold a far side of the map lane one v two. Reconstitution can actually be very good. Yep. Um, but the go to pick is just ventral sack centrifugal hooks gets the uh gets the shout out for a thing i wanted to be bane link speed but isn't it's just range yeah so now i no feel like it'd be a lot better if it was just speed not range um yeah. personally and maybe the bane links are a little bit more tanky that would be nice if they put that in there as well um just because bane links can be one shot yeah uh by everything <laughs> mm, roots bane links plus roots my favorite my uh, favorite i don't know if i've actually witnessed speed. that Oh. The, the grassy vortex just yep. you mean you mean rooting actually <laughs> banelings yeah no like if you're rooted if root by malfurion and you try to cast banelings they all get stuck at the oh i see i see it's great it's yeah, great yeah. it's gross yes yes i just love how they explode on anything it's just like oh yeah. like i remotely touched a rock that <laughs> might be touched to a wall <laughs> blah, 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 blah. they're banelings yeah, yeah that's what they do they explode I think, no the worst worst is if you've already like destroyed a fort and it's just like a pile of rubble. Oh, there. that drives out. Like, Come yeah. on. I've already taken out. this thing out. Yeah. yeah. I go for sacks, ventral sacks, three roaches. Yeah. Pretty freaking good when you're pushing, when you're killing things, when you're killing more things. <laughs> three roaches, just that extra roach, just, it's, you know. Uh, ridiculous. Well, that's the thing. It's, it's good for everything. It doesn't have a downside. Yeah. More, more tanks yeah. on the tower, more damage, better for murking. It's just... It's it's kind of a no brainer, and it yeah. seems that, our, in general, the the Everybody. community agrees. Sixty two percent go with ventral sacks, such a frugal hooks. I you know I think everybody kind of grabbed that initially when you first start playing Zagar. You're like, that's awesome. I'm gonna build their banelings, yeah. but the banelings build yeah. isn't really a thing that great. Reconstitution, like you said, if if you special can, shout if out, you can you can predict that you're gonna be in one lane versus two, and you're gonna kind of try to take it that way, but in the long run. Again, Ventral Sacks, probably the way to go. Demolitionist, if you're going a five specialist build and you're just trying to push them down, we've done that before, go with Demolitionist. Otherwise, one person that voted, sorry, you might want to reconsider. <laughs> well, I mean, wh why why go for Demolitionist when you can get Ventral Sacks and you can have one, you know, you know what, you know what? Yeah. 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 
That's way more roach damage. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I, like across and the board. it does more in team fights. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If demolitionists drained their mana, then that'd be great, but it doesn't, and that would be broken. Can you imagine like mana burn on demolitionists? Does it even make any sense? What would a demolitionist no drain? Sense. It makes actual <laughs> zero sense. Uh, I just... think centrifugal hooks would be great. If it meant that your banelings wouldn't just run into walls, like if instead, like they're like, oh, you know, would go around obstructions and stuff, that would be awesome. What if you the banelings could be like wings. Mario Kart and ride walls now, like the most recent <laughs> Mario Kart? That that'd be centrifugal hooks, no, right? Actually, they get to go around walls and follow them and stuff. They don't. They don't. They they drift, and the longer they drift, <laughs> they then <laughs> like boost afterwards. Whatever. You can actually fire hop with your banelings. Yeah. Turn his centrifugal hooks into blue shells, and right. hit whoever's got the most. <laughs> <laughs> level four. I just got Mario Kart in the brain. <laughs> level yeah. four. Yeah, I've been playing nothing but it. Anyway, level four and Venom Spines basic attacks uh, have their range increased by twenty percent and deal an additional fifteen damage over three seconds. That's only at level one. That fifteen damage. Medusa Blades basic attacks deal twenty five percent damage to three nearby targets. Tumor Clutch. Max creep tumor uh, charge count increased to 4. Mana cost reduced to 10. In Venom, activate to poison an enemy hero, dealing 180 plus 30 per level of damage over 6 seconds. And Infest, increases an allied lane minion's damage by 400%, holds up to 2 charges. Now, I'm very interested to see what you guys have to say about this. I typically take in Venom Spines. And I'm looking at the straw pull at him. Okay, it was it was showing us Medusa blades, but uh, I I don't know. I just yeah, that that was I was like oh, I just would look at the two and like well they both buff my attack, but usually you're trying to nuke somebody down like that's you're not really you're looking to get that twenty five percent burst or like AOE damage. So mm -hmm. I don't know the 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 creeps. Uh, I mean it's already good enough. I don't I don't know if you need to spend a talent point into that. Yeah. And Venom maybe infest. I don't know. I don't just because it's lane minion only. Yeah, yeah. Infest that's, that's, is questionable. Yeah, that's the one that I would never consider <clears throat> personally. Yeah, yeah. I go with Venom Spines as well. Yeah. Dunk. That's interesting. I actually think if you're looking to kill one person, like, isn't Venom just strictly better yeah, than Venom Spines? Might be. Like, realistically, yeah. you're just not like the one range doesn't matter that much on Zagara, and her auto attacks don't matter that much anyway. Like, adding a little damage over time to them doesn't seem very exciting to me. I played it and I was like, I cannot tell the difference here. And in Venom is just like at least it's an extra nuke. Uh, mm. I personally play very, very, very poke heavy Zagara, where mm -hmm. I'm poking at their towers as much as humanly possible. So every instance where I can drop roaches, throw down a Hydra, and mm -hmm. you know throw my banelings and maybe throw five auto attacks at their tower, that one, um, the additional range and the extra damage on the tower is actually nice. I find it to be very useful. I mean, again, you could you could argue that Medusa Blades would be better for that. Yeah, it would be you, better for that situation. You can right? argue. But I prefer in Venom Spines just all, all around because in, in team fights we're always going to be trying to focus someone down. Um, I like the one range because I try to stay out as far as I can, stay as far away because Zagara is squishy. Yeah. And you have to be up close and personal to use in Venom. And I try to never be up close and personal. So I go with for in Venom Spines. Okay. okay. Venom Spines, uh, the biggest problem in Heroes of the Storm is sustained damage gets outweighed by sustained healing. And that's why I feel like adding DPS is okay, but you want to do more bursty damage. That's why I go for Venom. And Venom uh, also makes her probably the best 1v1, well, not the best, but one of the, best, one of the best 1v1 heroes. And once you get in Venom... It's pretty hard to topple her in any type of 1v1 combat. And if you don't win in that 1v1 combat as a guard, you're probably going to at least end up even and kill the other person with that in Venom. Because mm -hmm. three Roaches, <clears throat> Hydras, and a Partridge and a Pear Tree with in Venom, it's like there's not many people that can survive it. And tanks can survive it, but they don't want to, and they can't deal as much damage as you can to them, like percentage-wise. Interesting. Um, I'm surprised you guys went with Venom. I'm not surprised about the split on our straw pool here with Venom Spines and Medusa Blades. I think they both have their place for sure. But again, in Venom, you don't want to be up close and personal. I just find, like, if they're on you, if you're that close, I mean, you're in a bad spot. Unless you're on creep. If you're on creep, you should be fine. But if you're off creep, team fighting yeah, over, but I over mean, an objective. Um, how often have you been in the position where you're in lane and you have all of your summons up, basically, and you're just like, okay, this guy's coming on me, right? And... <laughs> 
<laughs> <He drops. laughs> no, just keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> it just drops. Okay, you just you just drop everything on him, yep. and then he's trying to take that fight, and then you're just like, oh, boom! You got a little bit extra burst damage right at the end, and it's like, I mean, you're right next to them when that happens. All right, typically. Yeah. I'm I'm so. gonna I'm gonna get it, and I'm gonna try it out because I haven't even given it a chance, so I can't I can't deny it. But um, who are the melee assassins you have the most difficulty dealing with? Like, I mean, as if Zagara? you're playing against a Zeratul or like uh, Kerrigan, like. They're gonna get to you, may they rage. You can't make them not get to you. You have no way to do that. That's true. Realistically. So like just try it out. Yeah. Alright. I'll give it a I'll That's give fair. it a go. That but as fair. of right now, I I, I really like Inventive Spines for the And also I think I did around. quick I think I did some quick math on it and uh, the DPS difference between Inventive Spines, like if you have the tick of Inventive Spines going on uh, for a whole sixty seconds versus the sixty seconds that's the Inventum cool uh, the Inventum cooldown. It's really actually not that much of a difference. The only, the biggest difference is whether or not you're doing that damage in six seconds, or if you have like twenty percent range. That's about. Yeah, it. but what if there are yeah. like ten targets and you get Venom signs on all of them? You can't do that with Venom, bro. That's true. That's true. <laughs> bro. But there's also not going to be ten targets that you're going to be really caring about. Yeah, I, I'm just. <laughs> No, no, no choking here, Dunk Train. Oh. I know you're on your stream with your choo-choo horns and whatnot. But we are serious uh, uh, business. Yeah, this is serious as business. Poor using his poor phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so poor. Uh, all right, all right. Let's go to level seven. All yep. right, level seven. Uh, we've got battle momentum. Basic attacks reduce ability cooldowns by 0.5 seconds. Volatile Acid Baneling damage against non-heroic targets increased by 50%. Corpse Feeders, which sounds absolutely disgusting, kills <laughs> earned by Roach Length increases their life by 10%, or by 10 seconds, sorry. Endless Creep, Creep Tumors spread Creep twice as fast and 25% farther. And Rapid Incubation Channel to regenerate 25% of your health and mana over 3 seconds. Dunk. 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 Why is it? Why is it? Uh, right, no, no, Dr. Sham Dunk. Tuke. Sham Tuke. Yeah. All right, fine. All right, all right. All right. Yeah. I'll go on this. I'll go on this. You ready for this? You ready yeah. for this? I'm ready. Battle momentum. Mm. I have I actually like been taking it. battle Same. momentum a lot on a lot of heroes. Yeah, like, yeah you I've, have. I've been, I've been, like I've been trying it out a lot. I'm, I'm trying to see like where the, where the, the good things about it. And on Zagara, um, recently I've been taking that or incubation. Yeah. But yeah. for battle momentum. Uh, you run through a lot of mana really quickly when you're doing battle momentum, but if you're pushing down a tower and you don't have that much time, you can constantly throw down uh, Hydralisks as well as Roaches, and especially in team fights, when those Roaches and Hydralisks get killed really quickly, you can just throw out more. It's just like, oh, you just killed them? Oh, guess what? They're the back. And uh, Banelings, too, that's also really useful for them. So I find that battle momentum really kind of keeps your, your swarm alive and uh, a lot just kind of always there. Just it's great. Jake, Jake, do you know anyone else that takes battle momentum? Kubi, you get battle weird. momentum. You do. Oh, I do. <laughs> Kubi, I love you. Yeah, it's good. It's really, but like you said, you just you basically dump your mana like so fast. Yeah. And I think that really this tier is coming down to battle momentum and rapid rapid incubation. It's a mouthful. And, uh, and and it's like one of them you get your mana back. The other one you just spend it really fast. Uh, they're both pretty good. Now and I've seen I've seen Jake using <laughs> rapid incubation. I'm like that's so much health. <laughs> like, exactly. it's, it's, it's not even about the so health. health. It's more about the yeah, mana. The health too, is yeah. great, but it's more about the mana. And I actually have a lot of mana trouble with Zagara. My creep mm -hmm. spread is constant, and I'm constantly spamming all of my abilities. Like if they're not if if I'm not fighting, I'm dropping roaches on their towers and hydras and mainlings, dumping all yeah. three of my abilities on a tower. Just like I said, I am always poking and harassing no matter what. Like if I'm either fighting them or I'm doing damage to their wall. Or Nexus or Keep or whatever. And uh, on that note, I will only get Rapid and Coup. Battle Momentum is phenomenal, but I can't imagine using my abilities more often because I'm already always running out of mana. Um, <laughs> it's I, nice, I though. Mean, it's even, so nice. Even with Battle Momentum, um, and I have a Malfurion, I'm, my, my buddy plays Malf, Tyler, he's a, or a Yami Sora. He's on my stream a lot. But I'm always just like, yo, give me that... Uh, in Innervate. 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 Give me that Innervate. Give me that Innervate. I'm using battle and I'm still running out of mana. Uh, mm -hmm. So I can't imagine getting battle mode to my, um, for that reason alone, just because I'm very spam, 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 spam. Yeah. Dunk? I, I would just... I, I would definitely... Just... Go ahead. 
Okay. I was going to say, I would just like to point out solid creep tumors don't cost that much mana, Jake. <laughs> oh, I'm always <laughs> running out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't cost that much, but it uh, does add up. I did say sorry. they do add up. Continue dunk. Yeah. Alright, so I actually I like Rapid Incubation a lot. I don't hate Endless Creep. It's not getting any votes here. I think people kind of underappreciate it. It's pretty good if your goal is actually to have Creep up. Um, but the problem is like the Creep importance is just not that high compared to the, so a lot of people you just use it for spot vision rather than the actual creep value mm -hmm. um so i think rapid incubation is where it's at battle momentum i don't find myself getting off enough auto attacks in team fights especially for it to matter and if you're pushing a lane and they're just letting you auto attack like you're doing absurd damage regardless of whether you have battle momentum or not in my opinion so like i think either way it's okay i just side with rapid incubation because i have huge mana issues as well i mean i find myself out of mana on zagara more than any other hero yeah, in the whole game me too and I mean, she doesn't have Path of the Wizard. If she had Path, me I would actually definitely get it, I think. Oh, I would take it, yeah. Um, even over the, the Tier 1 options. I mean, yeah. Tier 1, uh, we can just revisit it if you guys don't remember. That's Demolitionist, Centrifugal Hooks, Ventral Sacks, the additional Roach. I would gladly sack that ex extra Roach for more mana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't know if we will ever get that. I mean, they've mixed around the talents quite a bit in the game. Uh, but as it stands, there is no path of wizard on Zagara. So you, mm -hmm. you say you say rapid incubation is probably your. That would be my go-to. That's go -to. my go-to go for sure. You mix it up yeah. though. You know, I want to say that straw polls are actually probably most split straw polls we've ever seen. Um, maybe it's because we had the straw polls available like prior for the first time ever on the show. But um, you know, it's like we have like three you know commonly picked. I mean, endless creepy even has their little spot in here, which. Um, I can see being good, certainly, but mm -hmm. that's cool. It's cool to see uh, just diversity in play styles because though we might say one thing is, is kind of our go-to, it doesn't mean that there isn't a play style that works for sure, it's especially because yeah. the character's been out for like a week and a half. Yeah. All right, level 10. We already kind of talked the heroics a bit, mm -hmm. um, but just again, uh, just to recap it, Devouring Maw seems to be everyone's choice. We all kind of agree that Nidus is cool, but not good. Mm -hmm. And uh, just basically, like, the way Nidus works, it's about... You can cast about anywhere on your screen that you can see within your... Like, a normal screen range yeah. from your hero. If you're centered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But not, not anywhere on the map, per se. If it was map-wide, we all kind of agreed, hey, yeah, then it would definitely have its, have its place. Just imagine it being more like Brightwing, where, oh, my ally's going to die in bottom lane, let me just put a Nidus down there, and I already have one up here, let me go down there and help right. him. Yeah. Uh, I could see that being a lot better and more viable, but as it stands, it's just kind of fun. And uh, I was saying earlier, I actually use it for vision. If I see somebody trying to... It's like, all right, are they at Grave Golem? Oh, let's find out. And I just throw Look, a Nidus up tumors. there. Creep tumors are so good. He picks the ultimate that lets him have four extra creep tumors. That's how important creep tumors are. <laughs> it's just a big creep tumor in a lot of ways. It yeah. actually is, and it doesn't expire after four minutes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. I, yeah. Ma is kind of a no-brainer here, and uh, we're just gonna jump down to yeah. Chan channeling the the Zola. He also feels as though it is useless. The Nidus. <laughs> so channeling the Zola. Yep. Rip from the grave. Rip Zola. <laughs> So those thoughts from the grave. Kubi, did you post level 13 in the chat? I, I think I did. I'll do, no, I did not. Not yet. I'll right. do it real quick. Post that one up in there go ahead. So go ahead. Kev, read them off. Sorry, I'm just a little bit busy right now. Oh, so uh, All right, I'll read them. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Can you, <laughs> uh, I just. I have something going on with work. Uh, so if you could just cover this real quick. Oh, Sorry. Dead job, <laughs> dead dead host. Um, can we get Zoya back, please? That um, esports. <laughs> all right. So so level thirteen, we got spell shield, giant killer, mutalisk, which is essentially your hydrogen zero mutalisk, groove spines, and bile drop. Now, giant killer. A lot of heroes have that same thing with spell shield, but but mutalisk actually changes your hydra into a muta, make, basically making your 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 hydra is now now can fly, go over all terrain, and the glaives bounce, doing fifty yep. percent just like in StarCraft Two. Group mm -hmm. spines increases your hydra's uh, damage and range, right? Yeah, yes, uh, range and damage. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. Yep. it's hard to read in my little tiny shrunk version of the game. Bile drop is just it, you do basically does damage when it lands. Um, yeah. So, let me look up the straw poll. And Corey, what do you what yeah, are you Yeah, yeah, let's see. What what am I taking here? Uh, you know what? I tried Mutalisk. It's fun like in the extra duration can be nice, but 
I'm usually going about that burst damage. I feel like most people are too. Like it's just so good. But uh, giant killer. You say burst damage. Are you talking yeah, about bile drop spines. or group spines? No, spines. group spines. Group spines. spines. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think. Like, yeah, giant killer. No, I think like usually a lot of your damage output's going to be coming from your summons. Like the yeah, she's you know, a auto attacking is nice, but yeah, group spines. I, I feel like is going to be the overall pick. We'll see. Well, dunk it, dunk. I, I'm, you're talking bile drop. That's that's interesting. No, to me. no, no, no. I, okay. I, I <laughs> you use the word burst, and burst to yeah. me is not my damage over time does twenty percent more. Burst to me oh, is I like I get an extra effect, right? So it was just yeah. not clear to me. That's right. That's right. That's uh, but I I always run mutilisk on this tier. Basically, really? I think uh, here's what I think, and the reason why. I think that because the Mutalisk dodges terrain and dodges creep block, it is almost always going to actually get more damage on any target who's moving at all compared to even the increased range Groot Spines one. And it's like, sure, burst damage is relevant, but 20% bonus damage on your damage over time, that's not that exciting if you're trying to talk about like focus firing a burst target. It's not that big of a deal. But 50% duration is going to matter a lot anytime you're dealing with tanks or people getting heals. Anytime your thing actually survives, you're just getting so much more value. Not even counting the bouncing. Not even counting the bouncing. Like, the potential of your damage is so much higher. In a lot of situations, it just, it just makes the... The thing about Muta... I, I actually go Groove Spines, typically. The thing about Muta is it makes the ability a lot easier to execute. When, when you don't have mutas, you kind of want to wait for when you're in an open terrain. You kind of want to wait for, like, the right situation, the right positioning to actually release your hydras. Because, like you said, um, if you're going to release it just right on right on them next to a wall or something, your hydra's going to path, be all funky. Uh, Muta has the benefit of, okay, I want to start I want to start on this giant camp. I'm on the other side of it. I can actually call down my roaches and have my muta fly over and immediately just start helping it and before i'm even on the other side of the wall the giants are half dead so um i've actually been toying with muta more and i'm really really torn on this i don't know what i prefer i think this well, here's, is okay okay. okay here's the question though why are you going to let them not have lurker as the other option for mutalisk if you only pick mutalisk and never pick Ruspines, then they have to think oh maybe this ability is bad maybe we have to put lurkers here instead because that's way cooler <laughs> uh, lurker, lurkers. the lurker plug uh, I, I i wish i It'd wish i really do <laughs> be fun. Um, be fun. but i don't know i just find the the double hydra with the the buff on the hydra when you get double hydra as the next talent zagara becomes the best 1v1 here like here in the game arguably like easily able to solo pretty much anyone do crazy push damage just when you just want to blow down a fort or keep you know it, it just she just rips through them ridiculously so uh, and it, it's it's a notable difference compared to the mutas um when you have that extra damage it really is notable uh but the mutas like you said the utility and the ease of access and the fact that they can just go anywhere probably does make them better in most situations so it's a tough call i actually can't say what the right choice is personally and uh we can see our straw poll is actually relatively split um it's in favor of muta but uh a lot of people go with group spines as well mutas are awesome mutas <laughs> are awesome you and know, you get to pretend you're Jadong. Like, who doesn't want to do that yeah. when you're playing heroes I think with your Muta Swarm? Definitely Muta is more fun. I think people are going to look at it like, oh, that look, that sounds like a lot of fun, and they probably pick it and then go with it. And and it's good. In, so. in a scrubby point I want to point out is the Mutas are a lot easier to pick off than Hydras because they stand out a lot. Okay. You see this thing flying, okay, I can just destroy it really quickly. That's hmm. actually a relevant point. People disregard Hydras much more often, especially in a team fight. You see a Muta, I'm going to take it out. It's flying. Eh. No, I'm telling I mean, you. I'd snipe mute as the second I see them. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, but the, th the thing is, the th <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, the thing that I think about that then is that okay, so my hydras. To me, that just means that my muta is getting to the target and doing damage, but my hydra doesn't seem like it's doing damage. Again, I don't know. It's just positional. Muta's, you muta's it always to... muta's always on your target. That's the only problem that I have with until it melts. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you have two in battle momentum. <laughs> Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> GG mana. Rip. And it does that AoE damage. That AoE damage. Well, not really That's true. AoE. That I think random bounce. Seconds bounce. We were corrected yeah. on that bounce. It is bounce. Yeah. yeah. It is bounce. It is bounce. Yeah. Uh, the 50% play bounce. 
I don't know. I'm torn. I'm going to play with Mutas more. Yeah. I think they're both good. Yeah, I definitely think they both have their place, for sure. But on to level, level 16. 16. Yeah. Now, like I said, I get the double Muta or double Hydra every uh, every yeah. single time. Corey, did you post this in chat? Uh, yes, I did. God. Chat, so stop being do active. We, do we even want to introduce the other talent choices there? Like... I, there, yeah, yeah, are like, there questions to be had? All right, so so now now spawns eight banelings. That's don't get me oh, wrong. I want it to be. So, I want it to be good. Don't get me wrong. That's really cool, and it, it mm -hmm. looks terrifying. Like oh my god, yeah. Um, like you know, I, I'm, I'm a Terran player, so I think of eight banelings as like please, please no. But uh, you know, the 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 movement speed on the creep increased by thirty percent. You know, the if if you're go if you're doing that, you're probably going a creep build. And you should lose so much yeah, for that. No, you you lose so much. Again, Dunk, you uh, you brought up a good point in your post that you'd like to see it moved. And I, yeah, I think you, sure. you said one tier one. I think yeah. that might be a little bit strong. But there's definitely some other tiers that you could throw that into, and it would make a lot more of a choice. Like, you would have to think about it a bit more. But right now, um, yeah. I mean, that's just an absolute... There's, there's too many. Yeah, well, not no. too many. There's one good option that you really have to look at and say there's nothing else that even compares. Yeah. But the double, the double Hydra, the double Muta... It's it's a you, you get that like there's I don't think there's an argument I, if you guys say anything else I'll be shocked. Yeah no absolutely you have to have to take the double whatever you end up going with but <laughs> two summons it's good. Yeah. Either way you're doubling something. You're yes. <laughs> Double or nothing. Bailing massacre we got a few people learning for that but the general public is going with brood expansion. Yeah. Um, no surprise there. And uh, yeah. last that's but, an easy one. Yeah last but not least we got twenty. And at 20, we have Fury of the Storm, Bolt of the Storm, Tyrant Maw, and Broodling Nest. Now, Fury and Bolt are in a lot of heroes, and for the heroics, the upgrades are Devouring Maw, basically just does more damage, and that reduces the cooldown if you get a hero kill, um, which is nice, but Maw's pretty weak, even with the damage upgrade. It's You, you really have to kind of like get them at their last 10% of health. Um, the Broodling Nest, we were talking about it earlier, it is horrible horrible it is it is <laughs> just it's we saw there was actually a video on the top of reddit of the birdlings actually killing someone because it was such a big deal that they did anything um and uh but personally i grab bolt zagara has very limited movement options so the interesting thing about tyrant ma that i'm looking at is the reduction in cooldown right I told you this. 50 you seconds. Me. Yeah, you, you did tell me this. And I just like, oh, did not read this. I just saw that 50% more damage and just left it at that. It's nice, but it already does so little damage that it's going to be pretty hard to kill people with. I've seen it happen a few times where they get another one up like a couple seconds later. I forget what the actual cooldown is. I think it's uh, 90 seconds. seconds. So if you kill two targets with the Tyrant Maw you upgrade, it it's instantly refreshed. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice, but that's it's kind of a rare situation. I, so I just think the mobility, I think the mobility is you, you really can't knock it here. So yeah. bolts probably going to be the better choice more often than not unless you're running like a double triple support like triple support ugh. like a double support where you know you're going to be safe um and you're really confident that you don't need bolt i would i would consider getting tyrant maw but nine yeah. times out of ten i'm going to get bolt yeah yeah and like you're going to be casting maw usually to pull someone out of the fight and it's going to be when they're at high health you're like okay i don't want this person in the fight and then maybe you use it as a wall too i don't it the delay is too long for it to be a killing blow. Like, it's just yeah, absolutely. The, not reliable at all for that. Like, maybe you get killing blows sometimes when people are running, but, mm -hmm. like, the likelihood is so small because of the delay that you can actually be able to hit them with. So you have to use the Devouring Maw after somebody is close enough to dead for it to kill two people, and then it'll <laughs> reset and you can use it again in the team fight that's still going on after that long? Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's it's a bit strange. Maybe if they change it so that the more people you hit, just hit, and like not as you know as harsh of a cooldown reduction, maybe like ten seconds off or something. But even then, it's not going to help for that fight. Uh, I'm not sure what they should do to it. But bolt seems like the better choice. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think for sure. The thing about Maw is I'm pretty sure Maw has a limit as to how much you can actually eat. I don't know. I don't think you could consume five people i just don't think it's possible uh, i've seen four so seen maybe stack, so i bet you could they always they probably big enough it always, yeah. uh, there's been so many times where it's like trying to pull in like a hammer and this hammer like just kind of like, starts to get pulled but doesn't make it in 
I don't know. I've seen I, you grab four people. I'm pretty sure I've seen you grab I've four people. I've probably grabbed four, but it just seems like it's so unlikely. And like, yeah, it's tough. I have gotten two kills at once. I have. And it's fantastic. It's not but unlikely at all. It is you can unlikely. always hit four. Mm -hmm. uh, just believe yeah. in yourself. Uh, but, Gas, Gaslow? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not even, not even worth it. Just so you're going to avoid prison to set up your yes. maw, right? Yes. That's what you're Next doing? Level. That's how you hit four? Next level. Such, such <laughs> that's the best thing you can do with void prison? <laughs> yep. Imagine that, like, you get, like, most of the wombo combo, they're all really hurt, you maw them, and then all of a sudden you get four cooldown reductions of maw? Gives you three stacks of maw. <laughs> yeah, you just hit stack, they stack, yeah. Oh my god. If it did stack and you got two char charges of maw, that wouldn't be balanced. That wouldn't be not that at all. So <laughs> that would make the wombo like esports. Esports, yeah, that'd be pretty hype, but so un so unfair. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna happen. Um, okay, let's get some final thoughts on the the Zagara. I mean, okay, so this is a point I brought up on the Reddit thread, and somebody mentioned it in chat as well, like. What do we think about swapping Maw to Kerrigan and Ultralix to Zagara? Oh, yeah. I mean, something to think about. I think that's pretty reasonable. I actually like it. You're right, it does fit their kits or their themes a little bit better. Thematically, it does make yes. sense. It does. Um, for sure. I'd be fine with it. I mean, uh, like, obviously, like, there's a lot of balance stuff that would have to go oh, into yeah, that. Sure. So we need tweaking, for sure, no question. But, I mean, it's just, I feel like that would make each kit, like, it feels like it would fit so much more smoothly for each kit. I don't I don't think you can really argue that, like, Ma fits Zagara better than an Ultralisk would. I don't think it's even close. <laughs> and, I mean, like, a Ma makes more sense. Like, Kerrigan controls, like, the biggest of the biggest <laughs> things in the Zerg's form. The Ma seems like it's way bigger than an Ultralisk. Whereas an Ultralisk is, is an iconic Zerg unit, and it just fits... You're right. It just it just fits mother. That. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at first I was thinking that would be too strong for Kerrigan to have. Like, it, I think Maw is very good. I think it's a yeah. very good positioning thing. But at the same time, you have Zero Twelve Void Prism, and it's really like it, it, you know, essentially, it's not very different. Um, it's really just kind of a lot of position control, and uh, I mean, Void Prism might have more execution involved afterwards, but you can still definitely execute after you mob. A few players in the team. I would like that actually. I I think it makes sense. Um, mm. I never even thought about it really that way to be honest. But that's a really good suggestion because, God, imagine it could get creep too. It could get creep bonus too and actually hit things. How nice would that be to see the ultra <laughs> actually attacking? You're you're actually really right. Because um, yeah. the ultra sucks. In yeah. an ultra on creep, it's GG. Cool. You're dead. Like you you're good. just gonna good. die. It would actually really. Um, promote the core mechanic of, of Zagara, which is creep, and promote using your ultra on creep to punish people, and you know, to really just make it like, okay, we want to kill this Zagara. He's on creep. Mm -hmm. You know that the the risk of the ultra being there is devastating. Like you know, you have to really take that into you know account, and at the same time, the Zagara has to choose. Hey, do I want to save my ultra, or do I want to use it to really just push down this tower, push down this fort? Um, I feel like it might make Zagara too good at pushing. That's the only thing. It, can that be a thing? Like, it, is there really a thing where, like, this hero is too good at pushing if they're left alone or whatever? And I think Gazlo is miles ahead right now anyway. So I don't think that's particularly close. I mean, she would have to get a pretty big change to, right. for Gazlo. Like, not better. At least if you're picking Robo Goblin. Like, Robo Goblin is uh, absurd yeah. at pushing. <laughs> But nobody picks it because yeah. it's so rare that you get to push, right? Yeah, so, like, yeah. if True. you're telling me Zagara would be too good because she could push, like, uh, it's not really, not but really hitting the spot. The difference being is that this has multiple uses. Rubble Goblin is very specific. Yeah, to, absolutely, absolutely. And whereas the the Ultra would be good in a team fight. It would be good on creep, obviously one v ones and pushing. Um, I don't know. I think that's a great suggestion. I don't know if I ever see it, but I would actually love to see that happen because I do love Maw. But thematically, I think both characters would improve from it. I think it would be a buff to Kerrigan, though. A big buff. It would. It would. Um, mm. But it would also... And, and I, don't, I don't know. I, her other heroic is really good. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. But then you're giving you're giving her the option to have you know more control in a fight. And she's already up close and personal. Yeah. Once you give those the, the zoning and the control options in a fight, like... Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, like Dunk was saying, it would take a lot of numbers tweaking to make it... Yeah worthwhile so i guess it's unfair to judge it like that mm -hmm. okay well i've got nothing else on cigar i mean i haven't played it as much as you jake but yeah Ke kev is is working working hard He's working hard 
Morgan Hart. Sorry, uh, production issues. Um, anyway, Zagara, freaking awesome lover. She's not going to be good for scrimmages because she doesn't. She's. I mean, kind of. Zoya said this before. She's. She's good at a lot of things, but not really great at 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 one or you know at the ones that really matter for scrimmages. And I don't think the creep tumor. The creep tumor thing is really cool, but I don't. I don't know. I, I don't imagine it working out perfectly in scrimmages. I don't. It's it's weird to say. Like I can't see it working well in. She doesn't really have synergy with another team. Hmm. I guess is probably what I think. It, it comes down to it. Yeah. Like she's I mean, really she good at a lot of things, but like Kerrigan's good at a lot of things. Worked in a way that you could synergize a team around it. Her synergy is have not your really team there. Have a lot of CC, so your summons can hit things. And like, what team doesn't already want a lot of CC, right? Right. And I mean, the summons do damage, but they don't do a lot of. They don't do enough damage that I would say I want her over like a Falstad or a Gazlo, you know, because there's no, she doesn't have any CC except she for the Maw. Yeah, she doesn't have any CC on her kit anyway, which is like a big downside. And yeah. I think that's the biggest issue there is everybody pretty much has CC and I, and I think without that, I mean the Maw is great, don't get me wrong. You can, you, I mean, if you even if you just cast it on a Lily and you get rid of that Lily four seconds, as the description says, um, that's that's great. That that does a lot of damage to their team. You know, not having that Lily, but I, I I just don't think it's enough. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, I like it. <clears throat> well, Coops, mm. do you have? I think that kind of wraps up our Zagara discussion. Do you have a Koopy question? We've actually not done it in a few weeks because we've been so so swamped with discussion. But do I have a Koopy question? I always <laughs> got a Koopy question. We got a. I wish I wish Jared was here to, to really hype this up. Well, Jared's sure not here, but it. I'll hype it up for you. This is <laughs> this is a segment we do every week where Kubi kind of breaks down and gives us like a, usually a unique situation or a unique topic mm -hmm. that makes us mm -hmm. think a lot about the game, think about a very specific scenario, and uh, we call this little segment Kubi's question. <laughs> <laughs> the silliness is real. I yeah. like it. Where's the ice cream truck at? Actually, Jake, you're going to enjoy this one. Okay. And it's funny because we've been talking about Blackheart's Bay a lot between the, you and I and our, the rest of the people that we play with. We have but you know that I've had this question ready for some time. Uh, and actually, I do want to discuss general strategy on Blackheart's Bay. Uh, in specifics, uh, we've sort of been tailoring a bit of the show to solo queue. And so I want to talk about what people should be doing in general, like at any given time on Blackheart's Bay. So I think really what makes Blackheart's Bay interesting is that you can, you can look at it and say really the objective of the map is available at any point in time. So you could be collecting coins or you could be laning. Whereas you look at Cursed Hollow, you really, you know, there's a point in time where you're taking the, the tribute and there's a point in time where you're laning. So there's like a switch off. But Blackheart's Bay, other than the chests, you really should be, I mean, this, this you, is a decision to make. And it's like, what is really the optimal decision to be doing to get the most effectiveness out of the map? So I want to hear what you guys have to say about general strategy. And we'll start from a solo queue perspective, but like the right way to play the map. So who wants to start? Man, that is a heavy question. I know, I know. <laughs> but Kubi's question is... Oh. <laughs> Man, so how should you play Black Hearts? Yes, because I feel as though... They do a pretty good job telling you, not really telling you, but giving you a strong suggestion as to what you should be doing on the other maps, but Black Hearts is it's kind of ambiguous, especially from somebody jumping into it. It's like, well, what, are, what should I be doing right now? What is, what is effective? What is efficient? Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of interesting in how much value there is in keeping track of and making use of the small Merc camps that just give coins, and I think that's something that a lot of people miss on the map. Yep. Um, that's probably like the number one point where like in solo queue pub games like people just don't realize that you have to take those every cooldown it's just it's an enormous enormous impact on the way the game flows if you're taking those other than that i don't know man that, that's <laughs> such a it's so such a complex question because there's so much situational stuff in there like yeah. like with every other map you probably want one person in each lane holding xp and then you want two people like roaming or doing mercs or doing that kind of stuff but then how much are chests worth? Like, how do you value fighting there? How do, when do you, like, go for a turn-in? Like, what strategies do you want to use with that? Like, do you want to conserve turn-ins until they're on the Tier 2 forts where they're more relevant? Do you want to try and get the first turn-in as fast as possible so you can maybe hit level 10 first? Um, like, all of this stuff is really relevant and really situational, especially team comp yeah. dependent. So, I mean, it's hard. 
It's hard. That's why I was excited with this question. Like, <laughs> this one is like so open ended. There's it's, so many so many ways to go. <laughs> so we've been playing around with our builds, as you know, and like one of the things, or our strats rather, not builds, but one of the strats we tried running with is uh, just to put some perspective. We have the we have a very low win rate on on black cards. <laughs> when we run on black cards, we it is by far our worst map, and uh, you know we were try we were messing around with just just five-man gangs, five-man roaming squad where we're just running around, going for objectives, cleaning up the coins, cleaning up the camps, you know, getting a few ganks, taking their knights, whatever. Um, it seems okay, it, it, but again, we're losing experience. So if we don't, we yep. don't, we don't get those kills, we then fall way behind. Um, yep. and, and it's just like, it's a tough map. It's, it's, it's a tough composition. I think the heroes you're playing actually matter a lot on this map for sure because, um, I find Zagara to be wonderful on it, just because there's so much movement, so much going on. To have the the creep vision is is huge. But to answer your question, I obviously don't know because <laughs> it's, it's a tough one. I realize it. Yeah, Kevin doesn't even know what we're talking about right now. No, I do. I do. Sorry. Um, I'm, I think I'm pretty good right now with uh, what was distracting me. Anyway, at the, the I I can't really come up with a solid strategy just yet but there are a couple of things that I can say empirically what I run into is which is a team that gets a lot of headway very early is able to control all the coins and spends all of their coins at the first level force and that's something that Dunk Train brought up is do you conserve your coins and wait until tier 2 because we've I've run into the counter problem with turning in as early as possible and getting that experience boost is that if your enemy team does catch up now they have turn-ins that are 10 or 12 super easy to get if you get ahead at any point and then they start taking out if they happen to take out any forts before then they start taking out your tier 2 and they only have 10 coins to turn in and you're turning in like 18 plus so if that game becomes at all turned on its head as it were you're going to be in a really big problem like really, really big trouble spot because now your turn is going to be way more to get the same amount of damage done. Yeah, um, it's the only it's the only map objective that gets worse the more like one team is ahead, which is interesting. Um, mm -hmm. It gets easier to actually get the coins, but it, it gets like fundamentally like a worse exchange as far as like how much you have to do yeah. to get the bombardment. The bombardment doesn't scale, unlike uh, everything else where the more you get the map objective, like the more curses you get, the curses don't get worse. Right. And it doesn't get harder to get a curse. It doesn't take three than four than five. I mean, that's an interesting yeah. thought. Maybe it should. We could talk about that, but I mean, it is really interesting because I've had turnarounds where, you know, the enemy wins one team fight, gets 30 coins off us, that's because we were fighting at the turn in or whatever. I'm not saying that these are most competitive games that I've ever played, but it has happened where, like, they get 30 coins, and just because of the way the game flows, all our tier ones were down, and then all of a sudden they get three turn ins off that because they haven't had one yet. And it, that would have been, like, one turn in for us. So it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. I think, honestly, the best thing that you could possibly do is get that first turn in after taking the first turret, of course, because yep. that way it yep. allows you to get that, that yes. fort. Yes, always. Um, which is something that maybe people don't know if you take the first a small fort secret, at, yeah. the, at the mid at the <laughs> mid lane. Mm -hmm. um, if you get that turn in, that first turn in will take out that fort. And if you can, if you you know, kill the turret first, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, aside from that, uh, I think you should honestly try and uh, contain the amount of coins. Maybe don't try and, and get all of them, because if you get into a team fight and lose them, then you're just feeding the enemy team a whole bunch. But uh, I think I think you should probably wait until that the tier 2, maybe get one more turn in, you know, maybe at the 12. So your tier 2s are at your fir uh, fir 14. 14 coins. You sound like, you sound like the pirate. <laughs> you lost a <laughs> fart. You lost 14 <laughs> coins. Um, that would be, I think that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, because if you start turning in and you have to and you're 18 plus coins mm -hmm. to take out a, a keep you're going to be in a really bit a really really hard spot to get into like into their base yeah okay so that's interesting in terms of how long you should hold on to coins and when you should turn them in but what about laning strategy do you guys feel like, how many people should you dedicate to jungling and collecting coins? How many people should be laning? Should there be a laning phase? Like, do you guys have any thoughts or strategies in general on that? Yeah, I think it's pretty much accepted that, like, since the bottom lane is so isolated, you almost always only have one person there unless you're actively trying to push with the knights. Yep. 
Other than that, bottom lane is really isolated from the rest of the map. It's kind of got like a two merged top lane system. Uh, so you typically end with one bottom. You want that to be a high sustain, really safe hero. Um, Zagara, Tassadar, yep. uh, Hammer Gazlo. Gazlo's yep. not bad there. Yeah. Hammer's not bad there. Just like people who are safe in general can lane, push the wave back, maybe grab the Merc Camp, the Siege Giant sometimes. But you really say, have people roaming that can do that anyway. Gazlo. Gazlo is probably your my yeah. number one choice yeah. to put down there because he can easily grab those knights and uh, it doesn't take him a lot of effort to do that. And it's just he can just keep pushing that lane up. And a he can one tank. too. Yeah. Yeah, well, so the turrets as well at that at that chest are going to be incredibly important oh, yeah, as well. Yeah. So that's why I think that yeah. Gaz is probably the best person to put down there if you're if you're thinking that they have to be a little bit more independent from the rest of the team. Yeah. Um, my, I mean, the rest of the team, I, I think you really need to have a mobile team in, in this map. Mobile was strong team fight. Zeratul is a really good pick for this map. Um... Honestly, Diablo Apocalypse is, is really strong on this map. There's there's a lot of really great spots that you can get those apocalypses down. Uh, ETC not so much. I don't really like the uh, the mosh pit on on this map so much because it's it's kind of you know it's tiny. He's there's, a lot, there's a lot of narrow <laughs> lanes and stuff, but I mean, it yeah. definitely can be used. But um. Um, stitches is great as well because those hooks go mm -hmm. all over yeah, all those yeah, canals. Yeah, yeah. So those, are, so those are some really yeah. solid tank choices. <laughs> stitches is so fun on that map. Um, yeah. and then uh, Nova's really strong for those orbitals uh, there's just there's a lot of really good picks for that but I think like you know Nova's a little less mobile so maybe not Falstad of course is going to be a really good pick but Falstad's really one of those really strong OP, uh, OP heroes he's good, all, OP. he's good everywhere very yeah. strong hero on a lot of maps Yeah. but Zeratul is definitely a really good one yep alright thoughts on the, uh, the golem when should the golem be Considered? Is it only after kills, or how do you, you guys have any thoughts on the goal? You can get greedy with it, but it's—I mean, it's like any other game. It's, <laughs> it, do, do you know where their team is? Can we take the golem? Uh, you're not going to try to take it right under their nose. Okay. Just another small problem that I run into so often with the Grave Golem is people are like, let's grab Grave Golem. And I'm like, that is a good idea. We should do that. But <laughs> let's wait, show on the way up. <laughs> let's run through the Watchtower, all of us. Yes. Let's go grab <laughs> yes. the Watchtower. And then I'll even grab the Watchtower, and then they'll head up, and then they'll just walk right through the Creep Wave that's right there, too. And I'm just like, yeah. like do you guys know how to be subtle? Have you part <laughs> <laughs> of the subtle dungeon? Is not uh, yeah. I think we've all been there, for sure. Yeah. Oh, God, that's the most. So, if you're going to go for the golem, try and get there ahead of your team. Push the creeps so they're not there, or go between creep. I don't care what you have to do. Just don't <laughs> show that you're going there, because that's the most obvious jungle camp that you could ever go for in any lane in any map. Yeah, that's what it's I was thinking. Small area. Like you really can find. So if you get yeah. caught there, it's bad. It's real bad. But if you like get you there. said, if you have the watchtower, it's very safe because you're gonna, you're always going to know. Relatively, well, not if they come from their top lane, though. Yeah, but still, you should have decent depends. awareness. Yeah. As if Usually, you're taking Golem, yeah. you're gonna have. I mean, again, like I said, yeah. it's all about knowing where they are. Yeah. So yeah. if you have the vision, go that's probably the safest Golem on any map with yeah, vision for sure. because it's so attainable in terms of vision. Mm -hmm. um, like remember, when we were playing the other night. You know, just my Zagara vision was ridiculous. So yeah. we got we got Golem pretty much every time it was up because we always knew where they were constantly. Um, it's kind of showing that the Zagara vision is OP, but uh, specifically, well, I, just in general, it's, it's vi the game is all about vision, map awareness, and mobility, and you know execution, obviously. But um, yeah, I mean, th like someone in the chat saying, no one goes top lane. Top lane is often relatively desolate because it's so yeah. it's such an objective-based map. I mean, it's about getting the coins because it's it's so so very. Good. I mean, everything's objective-based in Heroes. Okay. Um, how do you guys feel about monitoring the turn-in spot? So let's say you know that they have enough for a turn-in, but not, maybe not even that. It's, it's hard to say now because of the change that they made. You can just hit tab at any point and decide if, if it's likely that they're going to turn-in. But how much uh, attention do you guys pay to the turn-in spot itself? As much as I can. I mean... <clears throat> it's easier with some heroes, obviously. Zagara can yeah, you know, right. creep, but if, like... If I'm playing Taronda, I like to shoot arrows through there, just, you know, whenever yeah. I think... Um, is that enough? Like I, I mean, think really. If you're, 
I think if you're actually scared of a turn-in, like, let's say the turn-in is gonna kill your fort and it's gonna trigger, like, the level 10 advantage or something, if there's something that's, like, really important about them not getting the turn-in, I think most of the time you can afford to have one hero kind of sit in that area. Anyone who's got a good escape, or just really unlikely to die, even if there's, like, multiple enemies, you can typically afford to have that one person there. It's gonna be at some cost to the, like, effectiveness of the rest of your team, but I think you can typically afford to have one guy there scaring off turn-ins if you really think that the turn-ins is gonna be that important. At least for a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he can go get like the little night camps, the skeleton camps. He can go do that and like not miss too much time, right? So he's probably not gonna miss somebody turning in or whatever. Stuff like that. Hmm. Kev's working again. He's working. <laughs> working hard. <laughs> Alright, I think that's uh that's all I had in general. I just wanted to pick you guys' brain to see how you felt about strategy on that map. I think it is definitely one of the more ambiguous maps in terms of what you should be doing at any point. Um, do you guys feel as though that makes for a good map design? Like, do you feel maybe it's frustrating because the meta hasn't really been figured out for it yet, but does that make it a better map? Possibly. I mean, I, I think it's a very cool map. It's it's so different. Like, just in general, the way it's the way everything's laid out, um, the way you know, the positioning of the one tower that every noob game, everyone just loves to run to the smiley face and <laughs> just slam their faces on their keyboards into each other. And, uh, you know, that's kind of like... It, it's weird because, like, so many, so many like, low-level low MMR games just turn into, like, Team Fight City, where it's just, like, literally constant uh, brawl uh, of just boom, 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 which is exciting. Like, we actually played a game the other night that was just like that. Not to say yeah. that we're low MMR, but it was a very, <laughs> a very aggressive, a very aggressive game. And uh, you know, one of our one of our members on Skype, uh, he said, "Does this feel like a really long ga game to anyone?" It was uh, probably 15, 20 minutes in, and we we're just like, "It does," but it's just because it's been a very exhausting game. It's kind of like playing StarCraft Two, where you're just it's constantly just like boom, yeah. boom, 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 do stuff. Um, definitely not as exhausting as StarCraft Two, but um, it's a cool map. It's it's definitely not my favorite, but not my least favorite. I, I think uh, I mean I'm anxious for Blizz to add maps. I've been saying that for yeah. probably like two months now. Um, I'm anxious to see new maps just because I, I just want to see them keep mixing things up, and that's the beauty of Heroes compared to other MOBAs where we're not just going to be on one map the whole time. So uh, I think it's I think it's a really great map, um, mainly because at any given point you can kind of feel like if you, if you're if you've been on the back foot the entire map, it's still not that impossible to bring it back. Um, I mean, a little less so now that the anti snowball changes have kind of gone back and forth, but I still feel like you know if if your coins if you're if you get lucky and your opponents get a little bit too crazy. You could just instantly like if they had ten coins because they're you know they have a eighteen or twenty coin turn in, and they just like accidentally give you ten coins and you killed one of them to get that. Now you're at a five v four. Even if you're a little bit below level, you just go over there and you, you turn it in. And now like you start to make the, the game a little bit more even. Um, the jungle camps are really awesome, diverse, and strong. Uh, the positions of them are are everywhere and yet still. They create like this awesome mechanic for the map. So that's why I really like the map. I think the jungle camps and the objectives are a little bit even. And at the same time, like it just There's really nothing that's laid out for it. It's it's possible that it's the best map we have because of this question alone like it's it it hasn't been figured out like there were so many core strats that were just like okay this is this is how you play haunted minds yeah like, haunted this minds is what got you figured do. out so fast this is like this is the, the way the maps play and the map has changed a lot they've patched it quite a bit honestly i think it's probably the most changed map you know it's definitely the most changed map um but uh you know black hearts there's been a lot of just I never know what to expect in the game. Honestly, yeah. it's, it's a very, very diverse map, which is exciting. That's a good. That's a good thing. It's a good problem to have. So. Okay, that's it. That's all I got for Kubi's questions. Good job, guys. Rip. <laughs> you guys pass. We we passed Kubi's questions. Yeah, you passed. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. 
Well, I think that pretty much wraps up this show. Uh, yeah. It's been almost at the two-hour mark as it is, and that's just on just about right. It's a typical, typical pattern we go with. So why don't we do our shout-out, starting with you, Dunk. Where can people find you? Oh, yeah, okay. I was, like, confused. I'm like, am I... Do I do I know anything to shout out? What am I talking about here? <laughs> no, all right. Um, so you can catch me on twitch.tv slash dunktrain. You can also find me on Twitter at dunktrain or on YouTube at youtube.com slash user slash dunktrain, LOL. Because I'm always laughing. That's absolutely what that's referring to. Can we get, can we get the whistle? Do you have the whistle? Uh, do you want it? I mean, yeah, yeah I want right. the whistle. Can we get, please? Yes. Right. Not as loud as I thought it would be. Good. Do you want it? What, what kind of question is that? Normally I don't ask. I just go for it. Oh. <laughs> All right, Kubi. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, shout outs to Dunk's Whistle. Uh, follow me at Omega Black Mage. You've been making a lot of sexual sound <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Well, it's just the shirt, you know. <laughs> it comes with being Tommy Brissetti. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, that's it for me. That's it. Shout out to Dunk's whistle. Yep. <laughs> <Kevo. laughs> Shout out to Dunk's whistle. <laughs> um, How could you not? Sorry, sorry that I've been distracted. Um, you know, it's just the uh, the life of being uh, e-sports. in operations. Esports. In e-sports. operations. Esports. <laughs> Esports. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, uh, sh- you can follow me at Sham Two S C H A M T O O. Uh, both on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, I'll be releasing another free week tomorrow. I forget who I actually decided who I was going to be playing as tomorrow. <laughs> but free week is going to be my new series that I've been working on. I did my first episode yes or last week. Wow. Um, I did Tychus, so basically I'm going to be playing as one of the heroes that's free for the week. Going to do a whole entire match, heavily commentating the entire time I'm doing it, every single little decision that I make. Um, and then laughing at myself as I die to a Kerrigan when I really shouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> but apparently a lot of people liked it. A lot of people really thought it helped. Um, so I'm glad to be helping yeah. the community in any way possible. And My Tychus is you, amazing now. If so it good. gives you like an in-depth of how to play a, a character you've never played before, but they're free for that week, I mean, that's, that's all I want to do. So, um, yeah, that's, that's all I've got. Shout out to MLG for giving me a sick job. It's awesome. I'm glad Such you like busy. it, bro. <laughs> MLG's pretty great. I uh, I actually also work there, and I stream there as well, so you can find my stream at mlg.tv slash solidjake. Please give me a follow there. Follow my YouTube. I actually, see, what, what Kev just described, I actually just do that on my stream. Um, and then I post my videos on YouTube, so I have the same exact kind of idea for Zagara up right now. So if you guys are trying to learn how to play Zagara, I have three videos where I go into deep analysis on like what I'm doing, why I'm doing um, you know, picking my build and everything as I play, just analysis for actual gameplay. And uh, I'm probably just going to do that when a new hero comes out. I'm just going to do it for each new hero, not necessarily like a once a week kind of dealy. But um, my YouTube is youtube.com slash solidjakegg. The VODs will be there, so give me a follow. All the town hall is there. You can find all 21 episodes there. Whoop. And we have our blog with our MP3 format for iTunes accessibility and just RSS feed. So if you guys don't like pulling up that extra tab on your browser when you're not working and listening to our show and you want to just <laughs> listen to it with your iPhone. Like, I used to do that at my old job. I used to have to listen to the YouTube like podcasts and leave my phone up and it would just butcher my battery. So now we have it on iTunes and uh, eventually I assume we'll get it on the, the Android store. I think that's kind of the next step to keep making the accessibility there. I assume it's probably really easy to get it on Android now that we have it on iTunes, so we should probably figure that out because I have gotten a few requests for that. But um, townhallshow.wordpress.com is our URL right now, so I think that oh. does it. Oh, oh. And if you're listening or going to go and subscribe to us on YouTube, do us a favor and leave a review and a rating. You iTunes. Know, four stars. iTunes, he means. Uh, iTunes. iTunes. Yeah, what did I say? You said YouTube. Oh, on iTunes. That's the one. Ha <laughs> iTunes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> put four stars down. Because four stars are way better than one, two, or three. Yeah, that's right. What about five? Last I wow. checked, at least. Man. I don't know if you can do five. I think you can only do four. But if there's five, then do five. <laughs> <laughs> Dunk, you wanted to say something? No. No, don't make me say something. No, don't make me talk. <laughs> I'm all out. I'm all right, done. all right. Dunk's out. Dunk's I already out. whistled, dude. I'm over. I'm done. Yeah, that's all I got. It. All right, well, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> that being said uh, Zoya is again once I just want to say Zoya is training for a new job so that's why yeah. it's not on the show 
but he will be back soon. We're going to try to do a Sunday show for him, but a lot of us are busy on weekends. We got Evo coming up this week. Yeah. I am driving like five hours to Corey's house yeah. just to go to an Evo <laughs> viewing party. Yeah. That's it for episode 21 of Town Hall. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take Later, care. guys.